Welcome. My name is Joshua. Greetings and salutations. Some of you might be asking, hey, Josh, where have you been? It's been a month and you've been silent in general. Justin Peters must have silenced you with his response. Well, you're not far from the truth, just not in the way you think. All questions I can't wait to answer for you. But first, a notice. Federal law allows for citizens to reproduce, distribute, or exhibit portions of copyrighted motion pictures, videotapes, and video discs under certain circumstances without authorization of the copyright holder. Most of you are familiar with this concept. It's called fair use. This is called fair use and is allowed for purposes of criticism, news reporting, teaching, and parody which doesn't infringe of copyright under Title 17 U.S.C. Section 107. That's an odd way to start the video, Josh. I don't think I've ever seen you start a video this way. Why would you do it now? Why indeed? That's a good question. That's a really good question. Because you see, May 5th, I released a video detailing the compromise with Justin Peter and Doreen Virtue's bizarre and false vision of Jesus testimony. By the way, Doreen Virtue is a fake name. That's not her real name. Uh, she finally admitted this publicly because enough people gave her some flack about it. So her name is fake. Her testimony's fake. Um, she's fake from start to finish. We'll set that aside for now. Um, but uh, ever, ever the victimized Doreen Virtue, she had to take on a fake name because, you know, the, the persecution of the New Age you know, Paul the Apostle didn't take on a fake name. His persecutions were arguably greater. But but I digress. I digress. Um, the May 5th video uh, was responded to by Justin Peters on May 10th. The same day, it appears to have been a concerted effort by both Doreen and Justin, just my speculation here, uh, they both released responses to me on the same day, May 10th, which was Mother's Day here in America, right? Maybe it is elsewhere, I don't know. Uh, Doreen Virtue on May 9th released a video saying she had been slandered, somebody's using her old videos, which is a blatant lie. Um... And uh, she just can't believe it, right? She's just a perpetual victim. Justin Peters and Dorian on May 10th both released videos. Dorian Virtue released one clarifying her testimony in which she unveiled her new and novel theology that demons lead people to Jesus. In fact, maybe Satan himself led her to Jesus. That's what she said. It, in all my years... And in hearing some crazy stuff, I've never heard Joyce Meyer say something so crazy. I've never heard Joel Osteen say something so crazy. Benny Hinn, never heard anybody say demons led me to Jesus and they should lose their demon job because they led me to Jesus. This is Doreen Virtue, who wants to write women's Bible studies. Well done, Doreen. And Justin releases his scathing uh, critique of my video on the same day. The following day, May 11th, I released a response to Doreen and was in preparation uh, for releasing a response to Justin Peters. Less than 22 hours after I put my response to Doreen Virtue, which is called um, Damage Control and Deception, Doreen Virtue came along and filed two copyright strikes against the channel, two fraudulent copyright strikes, mind you, uh, the following day, May 12th. So May 12th, both videos, the one that I had released on May 5th and the one that I had released on May 10th, were removed by YouTube due to her filing, uh, initiating what is a legal proceeding. She had to fill out paperwork under penalty of perjury, saying that in good faith, she truly believes that I have stolen her copyrighted material, essentially, and am just merely reproducing it. Just to say, in good faith, she really believes that I'm infringing on a copyright. And if she did this in bad faith, she's committed perjury. If indeed that's the case, and I believe it is. I don't see how it couldn't have been in bad faith. Doreen is certainly familiar with the concept of fair use. Justin Peters, her friend, and Chris Rosebro, her friend, wouldn't even have ministries if it weren't for the fair use doctrine. 
They routinely use massive portions of other people's material for the purposes of criticism, commentary, reporting, etc. And Doreen Virtue knows this. So she thinks it's okay for them to use other people's videos to critique them, but it's not okay for me. No, this is just a case of a desperate and devious woman trying to silence public opposition. Well, the good news is one of those videos has been reinstated. YouTube reinstated the damage control video just a few days ago. And I just got notice from YouTube that the second video has now been forwarded to her for review. Now Doreen Virtue, if she wants to keep the video suppressed, has to file a lawsuit against me. Which is what happened with the first video, which she didn't do. Because she knows it's bogus, and she knows she has no case. So now the second video will be back up June 30th. It's a long, arduous, tedious, ridiculous process, and I've been embroiled with all sorts of legalities behind the scene because these two cowards, Doreen Virtue and Justin Peters, uh, did what I could only uh, compare to handcuffing somebody and then punching them in the face. You cowards. Why don't you tell everyone, Justin, about how you like to copyright strike people too because around the same time, Justin Peters was filing copyright strikes against other channels that he didn't like. Why don't you tell him, Justin? I'm not going to give him your full uh, email address, but do the words just preach mean anything to you? Bet they do, Justin. Would you like to tell everyone about your cowardice behind the scenes filing copyright strikes against people to have videos removed this is what these people resort to when they can't contend in the realm of ideas and indeed they can't oh justin tried and boy did his case seem compelling um in addition to that i've had uh, a, a very um a pretty massive uh, medical family emergency uh, that uh, nearly resulted uh, in death of, uh, of a loved one. By God's grace, that has been resolved. This last month has been uh, a pretty bizarre from top to bottom. A story for another time. Um, uh, needless to say, this, what has happened here, is absolutely ridiculous and a testament to the illicit and underhanded tactics employed by these people, which are so radically not in accord with Christianity, I've got to question everything about Justin Peters. I already had my doubts. I already had my questions. But Justin, are you sanctioning potential perjury? Is that what you're sanctioning, Justin? Would you like to tell the world that Doreen Virtue had a legitimate case of copyright uh, concern against me? Or would you like to tell her that she was wrong for what she did? I'll wait, Justin. So... That's what's been going on behind the scenes. I was advised uh, that while I could have made another video in the meantime, it was going to be this video, which would have been released almost a month ago now. I would have released this video about three weeks ago. Uh, but as some of Doreen Virtue's content will be criticized in this video, it was advised that if I release the third, another video right away, she's going to hit the channel with a third copyright strike. So I had to wait until Doreen received notice that what she was doing was fraudulent and potentially illegal. That's what's been going on behind the scenes because this woman throws out copyright strikes like it's candy at a parade. I'm not the only one. Right after the May 5th video I did, other people were uh, making videos and, and, and commenting on the whole situation. That I know of. She's, cop she's hit at least seven, six or seven other videos with copyright strikes. Other channels have been deleted as a result. That's Devious Doreen Virtue, fake name, for you. Wow. But the plot thickens. Because I have proof that Justin Peters, despite his uh, re repeated affirmation that he was ignorant of her testimony, he knew nothing about it, I didn't know, he didn't know until I made the video, this is what Justin Peters said. He didn't know. He had no idea Doreen Virtue said she had a vision of Jesus. Well, Justin Peters is about to be caught in his biggest lie yet because I have pr proof that Justin Peters knew about this for at least five months. Repeatedly, 
Other people contacted him. Justin, please, what do you have to say about Doreen Virtue's vision of Jesus? Dor- uh, Justin, please, do you know what this woman promotes? Justin, how do you reconcile her testimony with your cessationism? Some of the same questions I asked him, but now I've got the emails to share with you. Just four that I know of, and I bet there are others. And by the way, if you're one of those people that emailed Justin any time since November 28th of 2019, and you have a copy of that email trying to warn him about Doreen Virtue, please feel free to forward it to me. Because I I suspect there are at least twice as many, maybe three times as many. Justin Peters lied and knew about Doreen's false vision of Jesus testimony for five whole months and said nothing until I made a video confronting him about it. Then the damage control betwixt the two of them began. Doreen Virtue scrubbed her entire website, removed the testimony, um, pulled, pulled the video testimony off of her pin section, tried to clarify it, then said demon's letter to Jesus... Please watch the damage control and deception video that I made, which has just been reinstated by YouTube after they ruled in my favor against her ridiculous, fraudulent, bogus copyright claim. You cowards. You absolute cowards. Hmm. We'll get to those emails in just a moment, but let's provide some context. Maybe some of you aren't familiar. Justin Peters responded to... my video, and um, let's see where he's coming from. If Joshua Chavez is going to attack my character and reputation and other faithful men, then by extension, it does sully the gospel. It does bring reproach on the gospel, and uh, I do not want that. And also, I want this to be a lesson for everyone, for all of us, me included. Proverbs 18, 17. The first to plead his case seems right. Seems right. Until someone comes along and examines him. I think you're going to be surprised. The first to plead his case seems right. I think you're going to be surprised. What Joshua Chavez put up, boy, it seemed like an ironclad case. Boy, it seemed like he he really had me over a barrel and Doreen Virtue. And boy, it just seemed... Even got some of the people that have appreciated me over the years to question me. The first to plead his case seems right until someone comes along and examines him. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to examine him. Wow. You could hear the heavy breathing and panting from Justin Peters. Boy, was he, he said even in the video, this it's just a test of my sanctification. Oh, he is riled up, isn't he? Not because it's righteous indignation, because he knows he's being found out. But if you thought the last one had your supporters questioning you, Justin, let's see how you explain away the proof that you knew about her testimony for five months. You're a liar, Justin. And we're going to share all of that in just a moment. But he says, a lesson in Proverbs 18. The first to plead his case seems right until somebody comes along and cross-examines him. And yes, this uh, is applicable quite often. Very often, somebody will give a case, sounds right, sounds compelling, until you hear the rest of the story. But there is another scenario that we see in the book of Galatians. There is a scenario in which somebody has been convinced of the truth and then later gets bewitched and convinced of a falsehood and has to be reconvinced of the truth again. Welcome to a lesson in Galatians. This is what happened in the church of Galatia. Paul had convinced a group of people of a certain truth, truth of the gospel in this case, and he left. And after he left, some weasels came in and were refuting, seemingly, the things that Paul had said. They were bewitching people to believe lies. Paul had to come back and reconvince them of what they were already convinced of. So there is a situation in which Proverbs 18 folds itself over again. Sometimes the refuter of the first one seems to be right and has to be re-examined again. And here we are. So we're going to start with Justin Peters' 
we're going to start with his main point first, right? Whatever the biggest argument he had was, that's, a, that's, a, that's where we want to start. This is the linchpin of his entire video, which took forever to get to. He basically played, uh, gosh, I don't even know, 40 minutes of my video, something like that. Which, by the way, I, I potentially had a legitimate case of copyright infringement. If I wanted to p put a strike on his channel, somebody even asked me, why don't you do that? One word, integrity. I don't want to be an underhanded coward like Justin Peters and Doreen Virtue. I've never hit anybody with a copyright strike. People mirror my videos all the time. And guess what my thought is? They're not my videos. If the goal is for truth to get out, you should just be happy that it's getting out to more people. Now, if somebody's pretending, I don't know how they would pretend to be me since I'm here, but if you made something and somebody's uh, plagiarizing it or pretending that they made it, uh, yeah, I understand um, combating that to, in, in some sense. But it's a good thing Paul didn't wasn't possessive of his letters the way Justin Peters is possessive of his videos or Dorian Virtue is possessive of hers. It's a good thing, right? You would think people would want truth to be out there. No, it's a business for these people, and that's why they do things like this. It's a big business. Anyway, I, I could have filed uh, a, a complaint against Justin Peters' channel. I'm not going to play that game because I'm not a dirty coward like Justin Peters and Doreen Virtue. But here's the linchpin of Justin's whole argument. His whole argument is on this premise that I was dishonest because I deliberately, I deliberately withheld a clip of him telling Doreen to her face that he doesn't believe in dreams and visions. So how could I possibly have the question, Justin Peters believes in dreams and visions? which was the title of the video. How could you possibly have the question? Let's listen to his argument, and then we'll talk about it. Uh, does Justin Peters now believe in visions, or however exactly you worded the title of his video? Uh, Doreen is actually about to ask me that very question. She's about to ask me that specific question, mm. the very question that Joshua supposedly had, the very question around which he based his, on which he based his entire Two hour long video. Whole video. She's about to ask me that question. Right. And I'm about to answer it. Ooh. Let's watch. Let's watch. Um, do you have time for one more question? Sure. Okay, thank you. Um, the Bible's filled with people receiving dreams from God. And and so I wonder if you could talk about if dreams from God are still for today. Yes. Great question. And in short, no, they're not. Um Hebrews 1, 1 and 2, I think, puts yes. the brakes on this. Uh, As I went to Hebrews 1, did you notice her affirmation? Neither one of you know what you're talking about there. Jesus but. is the final speaking of God. Everything that God has to say, he has said in his son, Jesus Christ, and we have a perfect, inerrant, infallible, all-sufficient record of that in his word. So Jesus is the final speaking of God. So, Joshua, does that answer your question clearly enough? Do you now understand that my theology on whether or not God speaks in dreams and visions has not changed? It is exactly the same as it always has been as the video clips that you use for me in years past. Do you now understand that? I hope so. Now we are left with one of two possibilities. You either did not watch the interview that I did with Doreen Virtue, mm. from which you took a 10-second clip. You either did not watch it, or and if you did not watch it, then therefore you have to explain your own words here. Do not answer a matter before you've heard it, right. lest it be shame and folly to you. Don't even answer it internally. Just wait. Just wait. It's good advice, Joshua. Mm -hmm. It's too bad that you didn't follow it. Oh. So if you did not watch the interview that I did with Doreen, from which you took that 10-second clip, right? then you answered a matter before it was heard. And it is shame and folly to you, sir. The other possibility is that you did watch the interview. Yes. And you were very well aware of the things that I said. Yes. Joshua, so if mm -hmm. that is the case, if yeah. you did watch the interview... Right then you are a blatant liar Ooh. and an intentional deceiver. Ooh. One of those things must be true. Wow. You either answered a matter before it was heard and a shame and folly to you, 
or you did know about the interview right. and you just intentionally lied about it. Oh, no. I am a cessationist. I do believe that those apostolic gifts have ceased to be in operation. They are no longer operative in the church today. They have already fulfilled the function for which they were given, and they're no longer needed in the church today. Uh, the other gifts, mercy, teaching, administration, those gifts are very much still in operation in the church today. Only the apostolic gifts have ceased. Was that in any way unclear, Joshua? Is there something about that you did not understand? Or did you just not watch the interview that I did with Doreen? Mm. Which is it? One of those two must be true. I either was not clear, and I'm pretty sure I was. Yeah, you were clear. Or you did not watch the interview that I did with Doreen. No, I watched because it. Because had you watched it, yeah. you would have not had any confusion about my stance and whether or not <laughs> Justin thinks I was confused about his stance. Okay. My Got cessationist it. theology has changed. Yeah. Does it sound like my theology has changed? No. Does it sound like I'm being inconsistent with my own theology? Does it sound that way to you, Joshua? How could you not have known this? It seems to me I'm being very consistent with what I have taught in years past. My theology has not changed, and you would have known that had you watched the rest of the interview. Or if you did watch it again, you're a blatant liar. Now, if you did not watch it, shame on you. Boy. Boy, Justin really gave it to me there, right? You got me. You got me. The linchpin of his argument is Josh asked the question, Justin Peters still believe in, it believes in, or Justin Peters now believes in dreams and visions? He said, if you had watched the video, you would have known I don't believe in just uh, in uh, in dreams and visions because I told Doreen I don't believe in dreams and visions. Justin, newsflash. I know you're a cessationist. Doreen knows you're a cessationist. Everybody knows you're a cessationist. My entire video was two hours predicated upon the assumption that you're a cessationist. The video doesn't exist without me assuming and repeatedly saying Justin's a cessationist. Justin's a, cessation- a cessationist. It wasn't about generally changing cessationism. It was about your hypocrisy with regard to Doreen Virtue. Let's start here. What he's basically saying is um, Josh deceptively didn't show that clip, which proves that I'm still a cessationist. Here's what it proves, first of all. It proves Doreen Virtue's a liar. Because for five months after Justin told her this, you know what she didn't say? You know what she immediately did not say? Oh, dreams and visions aren't for today, Justin? That's weird, because I've got a testimony pinned to my YouTube channel and my website and my Facebook page, etc., which affirms this wild vision of J- Jesus that even by charismatic standards is bizarre. You know, Justin, my entire conversion testimony is based upon a vision of Jesus where light beams came out, I was pushed back in a chair, et cetera, et cetera. She never said that. You know why? Because she's a duplicitous liar. So thanks for reinforcing the point that Doreen Virtue is a deceptive liar. Well, what does that change, Justin? I must have shown, I don't know, 20 clips of you teaching cessationism if not more, and constantly affirming Justin's a cessationist, and he's saying, yeah, but you didn't show me telling Doreen Virtue I'm a cessationist. Of course you're a cessationist. Listen. And he had all these clip, clip, clip. Oh, well, well, you know what? Let me play that one afterward. The title of that video was not intended... Uh, I, I wasn't seeking some real answer, Justin. Uh, you have a master's degree, apparently, and you're deliberately misunderstanding. So e- either you need to give your master's degree back or you need to tell everyone how you're deliberately misunderstanding a sarcastic question. I know you're a cessationist. I wasn't asking Justin now believes in dreams and visions because I actually thought you changed your theology, Justin. This question is designed to flush out your own double standards your own hypocrisy. Let me give you an example. When the Pharisees saw the disciples plucking grain heads on the Sabbath and they said it was unlawful, what did Jesus say to them? 
Have you not read when David ate the showbread? Let me ask you a question, Justin. Should, should Jesus apologize for being deceptive because he already knew the answer to that question? He wasn't asking them, have you not read, because he didn't know the answer. Of course they had read it. He assumed they had read it. The question wasn't intended to be a legitimate, straightforward question. It was designed to flush out their hypocrisy. Oh, you must not have read the time when David ate the showbread. He knew they had read it. Of course they read it. He was showing them their own hypocrisy. How about the woman whose son was born blind and Jesus healed him? And she kept getting grilled by religious hypocrites, kind of like you. And she keeps telling him, I already told you the answer. Do you also want to be his disciple? It wasn't a legitimate question. It was sarcastic on purpose. She knew the answer. Of course they didn't want to be his disciple. Of course you're a cessationist. You're telling me you wanted me to show one more clip of you affirming cessationism? Tell me what that changes. It changes nothing. I wasn't asking the question as if you had actually changed your theology. I was asking the question sarcastically to prove that you're a hypocrite and you have a double standard for Doreen Virtue specifically. The video was about her testimony, not general cessationism. Not you generally changing your theology, which we're going to get into. I mentioned this specifically, Justin. Tell us how sometimes dreams and visions are okay. It was about her testimony specifically. This changes nothing. This is absurd. That th- This is your argument? This is what people are apparently convinced by? Because they're desperate. They're looking for anything to hold on to. Oh, see? See, Justin told her he was a cessationist. Of course. She knew that before he came there. His whole life is based on cessationism. How how is this surprising to anybody? And tell me what that changes. Absolutely nothing. Because my question the entire time was, did you not know or did you not care about her testimony? It was about her testimony. But you, you really think I'm confused? You really don't understand sarcasm and you have a master's degree, Justin? Was Jesus confused when he asked the Pharisees, have you not read when David ate the showbread? It wasn't a straightforward question. It was sarcastic to flush out their hypocrisy. Somebody revoked Justin's master's degree. I got to explain basic sarcasm to a man who uses it quite frequently. I don't need a four-year-old to tell me heaven is for real. I already got the Bible. Thanks. You know what sarcasm is. Justin has reframed this in the most desperate and bizarre way possible because it's all he has. Josh took the clip out of context. Nothing was out of context. I know you're a cessationist. Everybody knows you're a cessationist. You wanted me to show one more clip saying that you're a cessationist? I wasn't asking the question because I actually thought you converted to being a charismatic I asked the question sarcastically to prove that you're a hypocrite and you make allowances for Dorian Virtue because I assumed, and rightly so, that you knew about her testimony. Ah, oh, Justin Peters says he never knew about her testimony and these emails are going to prove. The only context missing was from Justin Peters, who for five months said nothing about his decisive knowledge of Dorian Virtue's false vision of Jesus' testimony. Let's continue. And he had all these clip, 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 after clip, after clip of me teaching cessationist theology. And he... Wait, wait, wait. I had clip after clip after clip of you teaching cessationist theology? Even he admits it. Of course I did, Justin. I must have affirmed you're a cessationist I don't know how many times in the video. The whole video was built on the premise that you're a cessationist and that theology is incompatible with her testimony specifically. And the linchpin argument is, I told her I was a cessationist, see? What does that change? Of course she knows you're a cessationist. It only proves that she's a liar. Because she didn't tell you. Hey, Justin, you know, I had a crazy vision of Jesus. Funny you should say visions aren't for today. It's bizarre that she even invited you. It still makes no sense. She's just making inroads, playing both sides of the field. And you got duped. Justin got bewitched, and that's why he's so upset. That's why he was breathing so hard. We're going to examine him. You look foolish, Justin, because you are. Why was Josh confused? If he had watched the whole video, he wouldn't have been confused. I wasn't confused from the beginning, Justin. 
You're confused about me being confused. Have you not read? Jesus knew they hadn't read, Justin. It's designed to flush out your hypocrisy. I know you haven't changed your theology. Everybody does. So then, the the natural next question is, ah, so are you negligent or are you just a hypocrite? Turns out, both. Turns out, both. Justin's going to admit to one, and we're going to prove the other. If Doreen's ver- vision of Jesus is true, are you- here's all the videos of me affirming Justin's a cessationist. <laughs> you saying that it should be added to Scripture, and, and what you're saying is, no, it, it, it would be ridiculous because we shouldn't add anything to Scripture. This is Justin's argument. I- I'm just asking the question. Boy, does this present a theological conundrum for Justin Peters, who yes. believes that all such uh, entertainments of such notions is the source of all theological mischief, right? He says things even more strongly than that, especially Justin. His entire ministry is predicated upon diehard hyper-cessationism to the highest degree and railing against the very notion of dreams or visions or anything that might even possibly kind of constitute an open canon of Scripture. Does it sound like I'm confused about you being a cessationist, Justin? Do you understand the concept of sarcasm now? Let me know if I need to write it down for you. What you're going to see, he only reinforces, and yet she's got a painting of Jesus. We're presented with another problem, which is Justin Peter's embrace of something that contradicts uh, pretty much his entire body of work as it pertains to discernment and hyper-cessationism. So all of those epiphanies happened quite apart from a preacher, which is Justin Peters and Todd Friel's main argument against even this phenomenon. No. How will they hear without a preacher? Not dreams and visions, they say. This is Justin's theology and Doreen's testimony. That's what I'm comparing, Justin's theology to her testimony. What he has done is he has built a false frame. Right? He's trying to make it sound as though they discussed her testimony specifically. They didn't. They discussed what everybody knows. Justin doesn't believe in dreams and visions. Got it. We all got it, Justin. That wasn't ever my question. My real question was, how do you reconcile her testimony knowing that that's your theology? And I repeatedly asked, did you not know about it or did you not care about it? I'm talking about her testimony. You'll see why in a second. So after all of that, after all of his testimony against dreams, visions, encounters with heaven, ongoing revelation, what constitutes an open canon of Scripture, he embraces uh, Doreen virtue to the extent that that he is uh, happy to see what God's doing in her life. There you go. Listen, I'm acknowledging in the very same clip of him with her, Justin Peters does not believe in dreams and visions. Justin Peters does not believe in dreams and visions. So how is it that he embraces her in light of this testimony? The whole thing was about the testimony. Because I assumed, rightly so, or justifiably so, that Justin had to have known about this testimony. That was the whole question. He's reframed the entire thing as if they talked about her testimony specifically. Justin, there's no confusion about you being a cessationist, buddy. There's confusion about your cessationism being compatible with this woman whose testimony is so foundational to her entire existence. How could you embrace it? He embraces uh, Doreen Virtue to the extent that that he is... uh, Listen to that again. He embraces... Ongoing revelation, what constitutes an open canon of Scripture? Just so Justin's not confused anymore, here's me reasserting Justin doesn't believe in charismatic ideas. So after all of that, after all of his testimony against dreams, visions, encounters with heaven, ongoing revelation, what constitutes an open canon of Scripture? Mm -hmm. He embraces uh, Doreen Virtue to the extent that that he is uh, happy to see what God's doing in her life. Yes, this is the conundrum, Justin. 
Justin, I am only using your logic. I am only using your premise, your hermeneutic. I am only using your standard to understand how it is you embrace Doreen Virtue and her testimony of Jesus, but rebuke four-year-old Colton Burpo for his vision of Jesus. I mean, his vision of heaven. This is your hyper-cessationism at work. I'm just looking to see some consistency. Do you really believe what you believe? I mean, you guys held a, a strange fire conference a few years ago. Looking for consistency, Justin. Right? You couldn't have been more adamant that cessationism is the only way. It's the only way. God does not speak through dreams and visions. He cannot speak through dreams and visions. It would be to contradict his own word. Indeed, it would be to have an open canon of Scripture. Mm -hmm. And yet Doreen Virtue's vision of Jesus (laughs) is fantastic, even by moderate, even by most hyper-charismatic standards. Yes, Justin. I'm not confused as to whether or not you have changed your theology. I am confused at how you assert cessationism, continue to do so, and embrace a woman whose testimony is insane. That was the whole premise of the video. The whole premise of the video. Here's how he further tries to reframe and skew it. Listen. Over and over, have you changed your theology? Have you changed your theology? I want to know. He said, that's my question. I want to know. Over and and over and over. Uh, That's actually not true, Justin, and you know that's not true. Intermittently and obviously sarcastically, I did ask the question a few times throughout the video. After asking this question several times, I would insert, or did you change your whole theology, Justin? Again, sarcasm. Let me know if you need me to write you a paragraph uh, explaining it further, Justin. He says over and over, that's the question I asked. Here's the actual question I asked, and this is going to be tedious because, uh, well, just to show Justin Peters is a liar, here's what I actually asked over and over. The whole premise of the video was this, and her testimony is so prominent that for it's, it's unfathomable for Justin Peters to not know of her testimony. It is. And if he doesn't know her testimony, it's a negligent thing for him to be promoting somebody he has no clue about yep did justin peters and phil johnson not know about this or do they not care and if they don't care about her testimony when can we anticipate a formal apology to the entire charismatic movement right i'll be asking this question several times or do you not know about her testimony do you care so little about her that you didn't even read her testimony before accepting an invitation to go speak with her and tell tell her how proud you are of her that the work of work that god's doing in her You obviously know something about her. Surely you must have read her testimony, right? What does Justin Peters think about this? Did he just not know that her entire foundation, her entire platform, her entire influence is predicated upon this vision of Jesus? Did he just not know? Did he not care? So does Justin Peters not know about this or does he not care about this? Does Phil Johnson not know about this or does he not care about this? In either event, it's really bad. Does Justin Peters not know or does he not care? Does Justin not know about this? Does he not care? Has he changed his stance? Is he going to retract and repudiate so many of his teachings? Uh, I'm so curious. It's a big life-changing Jesus experience. This is the six months ago publicly posted pinned testimony on her YouTube channel that Justin Peters doesn't know about or doesn't care about. Does Justin Peters not know this, or does he not care? Do you not know about Doreen Virtue's ubiquitous testimony on January 7th, 2017, or do you not care about it? Which one is it? But he either doesn't know or he doesn't care. One of two things must happen. Justin Peters must issue a formal retraction and repudiation of all of the teachings prior to this, that have contradicted in any way Doreen Virtue's testimony, which would mean apologizing to Colton Burpo and others, because if her vision of Jesus is valid, then their vision of heaven is equally valid. Surely you must have read her testimony, right? I assume you did. It's a reasonable assumption. In fact, it would be unreasonable for me not to assume that. So I'd love to hear Justin's newfound teaching that sometimes visions of Jesus real three-dimensional visions of Jesus where the veil is lifted are acceptable and okay. Not okay for Muslims, but okay for non-Muslims. I'd love to hear Justin's new teaching and his hermeneutic whereby he discerns this. 
Does it make sense now, Justin? Are, are you hopefully unconfused now? Everybody else? My question was, did you not know or did you not care? Were you negligent or apathetic? It turns out both, as you're going to see in four emails in just a moment. What did I say there? I would love to hear how Justin Peters says that sometimes dreams and visions are okay. Because that's the only logical conclusion. On the reasonable assumption that he knew about her testimony, why is it that you are clearly a cessationist and denounce it everywhere, but you say nothing to Doreen Virtue? So my question was, did you not know or did you not care? To which Justin asserts he didn't know. So he answers the question and then apologizes for it. We're going to get to all of that. But why was I specific to her testimony? Again, he is completely shirking the issue, reframing this as though they talked about her testimony in the interview. They didn't. He negligently went on her program knowing nothing about her and just praised her, sung her praises knowing nothing about her. Why was I talking about her testimony? Why was it reasonable for me to assume that he had read her testimony and was somehow validating her testimony? For two reasons. Number one, I gave him the benefit of the doubt that nobody would be so foolish to go on somebody's program they had no clue about and just sing their praises. I was wrong. Justin Peters is apparently that foolish and negligent. But there's another reason. Watch the testimony counter. Listen carefully. And your testimony on your justinpeters.org website has meant so much to me personally, and I know that others have been moved and convicted by your testimony as well. So it's just such an honor to talk with you today. Thank you so much, Doreen. I appreciate that very much. And, uh, you know, rejoice in the work that the Lord has done in your life. It's been it's very encouraging to me to hear as well. So it's an honor to be with you. Thank you. So you can see that even that 10-second clip that he used uh, was a bit dishonest. He took that out of context because you saw Doreen Virtue opening the interview up talking about my own testimony, uh, which is on my website and has been for everyone to read for the last nearly 10 years. Uh, and, and so she encouraged people to go to my website and read my testimony. Uh, she said it was a powerful testimony. Any testimony is. But um, that's, that was the context. That was the context. That was the context. And so I... Wait, wait. You mean testimonies was the context of your reciprocation? Really, Justin? That was the context. The context was testimony. That's, that was the context. That was the context. That was the context. And so I reciprocated. And I said, I rejoice in the work that he has done in your life, Doreen. The work we were just talking about, the work that he has done in mine. And uh, you mean the testimony? You were just talking about your testimony. Own conversion that's on my website. Yep. And so I said the same thing to her, clearly talking about the new birth. Did you see that awkward pause? He realized he couldn't say testimony. Clearly talking about the, the new birth. No, Justin, a second ago, you were clearly talking about testimonies. How you came to Christ, the testimony. Talking about the new birth. The new birth. Joshua, not about dreams and visions of which I knew nothing about. Liar. Well, maybe he didn't know about it that day, but he knew about it two days later. Uh, in regards to Doreen, but that was the context. Uh, but you knew that, didn't you? Uh, yeah, I did. I knew that the context of your conversation was about testimonies. Just like you said, that was the context. We're talking about my testimony and testimony, and so I reciprocated to her, well, I I'm just rejoicing the work the Lord's done in your life as well. It's reasonable for somebody to assume he's sanctioning her testimony. How could he not? Her entire existence is predicated upon this false vision of Jesus' testimony. She told it everywhere, everywhere, all over the place. That was the context, Justin. That's why it seemed pretty apparent that you were somehow, some weird double standard, you were giving a pass to her crazy testimony while still asserting cessationism. I took nothing out of context. I didn't deliberately withhold a piece of it because it changes anything. It changes nothing. It only proves Doreen is more dishonest th than I gave her credit for. It only proves the moment you said visions aren't for today, 
Tell me why Doreen didn't immediately say, oh, because I had a vision. That's my whole testimony is a vision of Jesus. I even got a painting made of it. She didn't say that because she's a duplicitous liar. But you knew this, Justin, at the time you made your response to me. You had known for five months about her testimony, didn't you? You liar. Buckle up. Now, here's what Justin admits to. And he just wants to gloss over this. These were my questions. Did you not know or did you not care? He says, I didn't know. Sorry, mea culpa. Here you go. When I was asked by Doreen Virtue to do the interview with her, uh, I, I had heard of her. I, the totality of my knowledge of Doreen Virtue was, was this. Totality. Is that she used to be in the New Age movement, heavily in the New Age movement. Heavily. And she was converted, and now she is a believer on the path to progressive sanctification. That is the totality of the knowledge I had. Uh, on the basis of that, very vague, oh, somebody who was in the New Age for years now says they're a believer. He didn't even think to say, oh, really? What kind of believer? Are they like a Sid Roth believer? Are they like a Michael Brown believer? Are they like a, what kind of, he didn't ask any question. Nothing. What if she was Benny Hinn? What if she was a, a I mean, at this point, Benny Hinn might have more integrity than this woman. You knew nothing other than she said she was a believer. That's it. That's how negligent Justin Peters, his whole ministry is based on combing through hours and hours of false teachings to see whether or not somebody's kosher. And he hears this woman's a believer. Good enough for him. This is not just a little negligent. This is disgusting, gross negligence. Uh, I agreed to do the interview with her. Uh -huh. And actually, if you watch... Joshua's full video, you might notice that I said I had a, another interview that same day. I did. I had another interview that I did right before hers. It's not really an excuse, but... Uh, no, it's not, so leave it alone. Uh, I, I just I had a lot of other things going, so I didn't check her out. I should have. I, mea culpa. Mea culpa. Oh, he sounds really concerned, doesn't he? Well, I, I should have. You're right. Sorry. Sorry? You just want to gloss over that you're supposed to be some kind of discerning guide for the flock of God's people, those whom Jesus purchased with his own blood? Your whole ministry is discernment-based, and you didn't even bother to check her out? That alone discredits and undercuts your entire ministry, and your response is, sorry, mea culpa. I, yeah, you're right, I should have. <laughs> of course you should have. That, that's like going to work at a, a tire shop and not putting the lug nuts on the tire. And the guy says, well, you're right. I, I, I probably should have put the lug nuts on. My fault. What do you mean your fault? You're fired. It's a basic duty of your job. You couldn't put the lug nuts on the tire? That's how negligent Justin Peters is. Uh, I, I should have checked her out uh, more fully. Uh, I, I just More made fully? How about a little bit? You didn't even check her out a little bit. He said the totality of your knowledge of her was she was in the New Age for years and she became a believer and now she's following Jesus. What, what, what did you read? If not her testimony, where'd you hear this? That was the totality? You should have checked her out more fully? Doesn't sound like you checked her out at all, Justin. Because she had interviewed some other people. and In fact, in her email, first email to me, extending the invitation to Here come on a program, she yep. told me that she had interviewed some of my friends, Kosti Hinn, and Phil Johnson, and okay. so when I read that, I just assumed, okay, so you know, this is this is fine. So I I didn't see a real need to check her out. I just knew she had been in the New Age movement, gotten saved out of it. He didn't see a real need to check her out because Justin doesn't think for himself. If Phil Johnson and Costi Hinn do it, if John MacArthur does it, he'll do it. If John MacArthur takes the mark of the beast, Justin will be waiting in line right behind him. Brilliant, Justin. You know what Justin's just done? He's just incriminated Costi Hinn or Phil Johnson for even worse negligence. Justin said, I accepted her invitation on the basis of her interviewing my friends. Then what did they accept the invitation on the basis of? Was it Chris Rosebro, the bumbling hypocrite? Was it Phil Johnson? Was it Costi Hinn? Who did the first interview with her? that didn't bother to look into her at all, that didn't even have the excuse, well, my friend went on her program, so I did too. So which one of your friends 
is even a more negligent buffoon. Which one? Is it Costi Hinn, Phil Johnson, or Chris Rosebro, Justin? Who went on her program first, knowing nothing about her, not bothering to look into her testimony, and not even without the ridiculous, um, admittedly, excuse that their friend went on first? So who was the first one to break the ice with Doreen and her fake vision of Jesus' testimony? Which one of your friends? Good luck with that one. She's interviewed some of my friends, and so I agreed to do the interview. Mm-hmm. Uh, I should have, I should have done some more digging. And so again, my fault, my fault. I own that. I, I confess that. I have no excuse for it. I, I should have done that. Um, you, you own it. Why, why were you so mad at me, Justin? You're confessing to my question. The entire video was, "Did you not know, or did you not care?" Now you're answering, I didn't know. He says, yeah, I confess that. Sorry. And his response is, I'm a liar. I'm a slanderer. I'm the the worst thing since mold. I mean, effectively, that's not a direct quote. These people are, I I can't put anything past them. This is insane. Had I done that and come across all of these Uh really troubling things that Joshua has documented in it what now he admits that they're really troubling you're right i didn't know and you're right they're really troubling but let me tell you how how evil and bad you are oh justin had i done that and come across all of these really troubling things so i so i was justified to be troubled i was justified to be troubled he says they're troubling and he says i'm right you should i should have looked into her but he just wants to gloss over that. Like, yeah, of course I should have. No, of course you should have put the lug nuts on the vehicle. The tire came off and somebody's going to get in a wreck. What are you talking about? You're a liability to believers in Jesus, Justin. You're supposed to be a discerner. This isn't some hidden teaching that she had that you, you would have to go digging deep to find. This isn't something that she once said years ago and nobody would have known about it. Justin, this is the very foundation of who she is, and you admit it. The totality. I didn't know anything about her. Sorry. Pontius Peters over here washes his hands every chance he gets. Well, I didn't know. I didn't know. You're going to see this You're going to see this theme throughout. Pontius Peters doesn't want to take responsibility for anything ever. What a proud hypocrite Justin is. Joshua has documented in his video. Very troubling. Uh, I would have sought clarification from really? her on all these things. Oh. I would have sought clarification. He would have sought clarification. Uh, before I did the interview. So I, I own that, and that is my fault. And I do feel badly for any confusion that this has caused. Do you really? Do you really feel badly about any confusion this has caused? Because it sounds like you feel incensed that I pointed it out, even though apparently I was justified in pointing it out, Justin. You feel so badly about the confusion. You couldn't wait to tell everybody that I was a liar, that I was a slanderer, that I misled everyone. When, as you're going to see, the hole only gets deeper for Justin. He says, had I known about this testimony, I would have sought clarification because this is troubling. Justin says he never knew. Listen, buckle up for the big lie. How is it that you can berate me? for not doing my due diligence, and yet, when I didn't even know about her dreams and visions, and not doing my homework on Doreen Virtue, if in fact I did not know about the dreams and visions, which I didn't. He didn't know. This is what I woke up to Tuesday morning. Dear Justin, I sincerely apologize that your interview with me resulted in Service Christi making this... I believe this would be Tuesday, May 6th. I think that was the day he must be talking about. Or, well, somewhere there about awful video. I made the public comment below, she maybe May 5th commented on the video that you would not have known about my full testimony when you were on my YouTube program. Indeed, I didn't. And that you are consistent in your teaching that visions and dreams. This is Tuesday, May 5th, the day that I released that video. Not biblical. I learned a lot from you during the interview. She learned a lot. That was my first uh, knowledge that anything was even going on. First knowledge. And so uh, I responded to her and I told her that I did not know anything about her testimony. And Mm -hmm. I wrote this in response. Uh, I said, um, blah, blah, blah. I did not know about that part of your testimony when I did the interview with you. I had no idea. I have since heard something along those lines, but even now do not know the details. Again, this is Tuesday. Tuesday. Wow. He says, 
I didn't know anything when I went into the interview. I'll give him that. I believe him. I believe he. I believe him when he says he was negligent and didn't even bother to look. Then he says, I have since heard something along those lines, but even now I don't know the details. Now, mind you, this is five months later, because here's when they did the interview. November 28th, 2019. The email exchange he's reading to you is from May 5th, 2020, okay? Uh, so um, just over five months, or just about five months, sorry. Um or just over five months. Um, he did the interview May 28th. He says, I never knew. I've since heard something along those lines, but when, Justin? When did you hear something along those lines? Well, Justin heard something along those lines two days later. Two days later, Justin heard something along those lines. November 30th, a woman will simply call Kimberly, said this. Justin, I'm surprised that you did an interview with Doreen Virtue. She professes to be a Christian, yet has many YouTube videos promoting the occult. Now, by the way, Doreen Virtue in her May 18th uh, further damage control testimony frequently asked questions video uh, tried to preempt something about this, saying, well, there was a woman who... Uh, in a, sent an email to Justin trying to warn him about me, uh, but there's proof that he never opened that email. What are you, an IT expert now, Doreen? There's proof? There's proof he never opened that email? How are you going to respond to all four of these? Because there's proof he responded to this first one and ignored the other three. Doreen has already attempted to preempt the damage control on this one. Oh, there's proof Justin never got one of these emails. Oh, really? Because I got proof that he did get one of them. And uh, watch this. Justin's response on November 30th. Hi, Kim. I do not know her well, but she says she was saved out of the New Age occult. Uh, now, I've obscured part of Justin's email address as well because I just don't trust him. Even though this is his publicly available email address, I've obscured it. Because uh, Justin and company are, are devious, and who knows what they're capable of doing or filing or complaining about. Um, so I've obscured his uh, email address, even though it's publicly available and he gives it out routinely. I don't know her well, but she says she was saved out of the occult. This is November 30th, two days after he did the interview. Are you saying she is promoting that now? He asked her the question. To which she responded... Justin, from what I've seen so far, she's been promoting the occult for years, has authored books on it, etc. So many are coming out of the woodwork claiming to be Christians. I would not trust a woman with such a past without much caution. So, Justin, let's start with this email. What did you do with that information? Answer, nothing. Nothing. At this point, Justin didn't just forget to take the lug nut, put the lug nuts on. He took the whole tire off. Justin asked a clarifying question to this woman. Are you saying she's promoting that now? Well, did this prompt you to go look at her testimony, Justin, or did you ignore it completely? You either took this information, confirmed Doreen's insane false vision of Jesus testimony, and said nothing about it, or... You ignored this warning, proving you're even worse and more dangerous than I gave you credit for. You hypocrite liar. Justin knew two days after the interview, and not until I made my video did Justin ever acknowledge this. He never, he never asked Doreen a question about it. He never said anything publicly about it. Justin was happy to sweep it under the rug. Did you not want to embarrass your friends, Justin? Do you care so little about Doreen Virtue that you didn't even ask her a clarifying question? Hey, somebody told me you're promoting the occult, and I thought, hmm, since I know nothing about you, maybe I should at least read your testimony, and I read it, and it's shocking and bizarre. Did you not do that, Justin? Because if you didn't do that, your negligence is grosser than I gave you credit for, and you, my friend, are disqualified from ministry. And anybody who approves of you shows themselves to be disapproved as well. Absolute fraudulence. But wait! There's more. One week after that, one week later, Justin gets this email. Friday, 
December 6th. December 6th, Justin got this email. Hello, Justin. I messaged you on Instagram. Sorry, I had a technical hiccup there. I messaged you on Instagram, but I'm not sure you received my message. So I decided to send you an email. Now she's reached out to him on multiple platforms. I saw your interview with Doreen Virtue on her YouTube channel. I've been watching Doreen for the past few months. I started watching your videos since your interview with Doreen and find them very informative. I especially enjoy your series on spiritual warfare. So thank you for that. I mean, she couldn't be more flattering to him. I had one question, though, relating to your discussion with Doreen. I imagine you watched her testimony videos in which she states she had a vision of Jesus. Everybody would imagine he did. Uh, Similar to the story of Paul, which converted her to believe in Jesus and the Bible. She has also stated having other demonic visions afterward which threatened her. In your interview with her, you said God no longer speaks in dreams and visions. Of course, Justin said that. He's always said that. Justin is one of the spokesmen for cessationism. How do you reconcile this with Doreen's testimony and her vision of Jesus? Good question. Is this God speaking to her through the Son? Obviously, I've never met Doreen, but I believe her testimony as she seems to be a genuine person seeking the truth in God. I asked Doreen about this on Instagram, and she told me she thinks her testimony uh, was not a vision, but rather she saw, just saw Jesus. Doreen confirmed to her it wasn't a vision. It was the real Jesus, just like Doreen confirmed everywhere. It was a three-dimensional Jesus. Then it was a six-foot Jesus. Then it was a humongous Jesus. He had brown curly hair, no pierce marks in his hands. He was, beams of light were coming out of his heart. She got four epiphanies. She got pushed back in a chair. No, it was the real Jesus, according to Doreen. It was the realest, uh, how did she phrase it? Um, Beyond real. It was beyond real. Well, she just saw Jesus and had several realizations, which didn't make sense to me because is that not still a vision? Then she told me, She just thinks her experience was akin to having the truth revealed to her as a result of other people's prayers. I'd be interested in your thoughts and how you would explain her experience. Thank you. So what happened on December 6th, Justin? You ignored this individual and never responded to this individual. Why is that? Justin's pretty prompt about responding to emails. I, for example, I'm behind... Probably two months on emails. By the way, if you are waiting on an email response from me, please bear with me. The last month especially has been very chaotic, uh, both family-wise and legal-wise and all this stuff. Uh, so my my apologies. But um, Justin gives his email address out all the times. If you, if you go to the comments uh, section in his YouTube channel, he gives emails out all the time. His email, hey, c- call me, uh, talk to me. And I bet most people get a response within a couple of days from Justin. Would you like to tell us, Justin, that December 6th, you just never got this email, never responded to it? Because you're going to find a a very coincidental pattern. If Justin wants to make this argument, is he going to say that all the emails pertaining to Doreen Virtue, he just never got them? That's a lie. Nobody's going to believe that, Justin. We know you got them. And we know for a fact that you responded to one message where you even asked a clarifying question, are you saying she's promoting that now? And if that didn't prompt you to look into her, sir, you are disgustingly negligent. And if you looked into it and you found out about it and you didn't say anything, you're worse than Benny Hinn. The fact is, Justin did know. But wait, there's more. This was on, uh, this was two weeks after that. Uh, This one's a little hard to believe. Now, I'm not uh, saying that I blocked out the names and the email addresses of the people, uh, but this is to Justin Peters again, December 22nd. So we got one email November 30th, another one December 6th. Now on December 22nd, these individuals who also emailed me about this said, Justin, we are a community, and this is such a long email, and I can read the whole thing. Justin, this, we are a community of ex-New Agers born again in Christ who know Doreen very well. 
She was one of the most reputed psychics of the new age, and she created a lot of card decks for angel and ascended masters readings. She wrote many books with the new age. She was one of the most successful members of Hay House Publishing Company, etc. So they're giving him the background, right? Here's what they get into. Look at the first thing. It's, it's kind of hard to see, but right here it says, The first thing that did not sound right was her conversion testimony. She said she was in a church and had a vision of Jesus, uh, a vision where Jesus appeared to her, and that Jesus looked a lot like the visions of St. Maria Faustina, a Catholic nun. Um, as former New Agers and now Christians, we know such vision could not come from God, nor the real Jesus. When true Christians started pointing this out, she deleted the video, but we kept a video made by a sister um, in Christ from Australia where you can confirm what she said. Uh, then she gives him the links. And she says in her original testimony, she was justifying divination. And then she points out how she's modified the testimony. And she goes on to <clears throat> look at all these links she sent to Justin Peters. All of these videos sent to Justin. Let's see if we can make this a little bit bigger. Give me just one second here. Uh, okay, these are f about her friend Steve Bancars. Okay, so that's what she sent. Then she says down here, "We are shocked to see her with Chris. Uh, we were shocked to see her uh, with Chris Rosebro, and now with you. We were worried when we started seeing these names. Right? She follows up with more links. Uh, hold on." More links to other videos here. Justin, look into this. Um, they were shocked to see all this stuff happening. And Justin Peters, she, she, she ends it saying, um, as ex-New Agers in Christ, we feel it is our duty. Let's see, I think it's at the bottom of this one. Well, it's, it's just hard to see. I want you to read it if you can. I'm trying to enlarge this. Okay, it's a little better. At the bottom, it says, As ex-New Agers, now in Christ, we feel it is our duty to expose concerns with false conversions. Because Doreen is not the only one who said she came out of the New Age to become a Christian whose testimony does not seem biblical. Please beware. May the Lord bless you and guide you. Another sympathetic, cordial warning to Justin Peters with I mean, a lot of detail, a lot of background, a lot of links. Justin, would you like to claim that you never got this one as well? What a what a curious pattern. Are you just not getting all the emails about Doreen Virtue? You get every other email, but you don't you didn't get the ones about Doreen? Would you like to tell everybody on record that you never got these emails, Justin? Because I think you did. And you know you're lying if you say you didn't. But wait. There's more. Just a few weeks before I made my video on uh, May 5th, this gentleman sent an email to Justin on April 16th. Here's what he said. Justin, this is April 16th, 2020. I hope you and your family are safe and well in these troubling times with COVID-19. Again, very cordial Nice response. Um, Doreen, uh, I just, uh, yeah, Doreen Virtue. I've watched her testimony on her apparent conversion and being born again. I'm not so convinced. Her testimony is alarming and some definite signs of not a genuine conversion to our Lord Jesus Christ. If you're already aware of this, Justin, that's fine. Uh, thought. I, th I think he meant to say thought. Thought I'd give my concerns, especially since she's on YouTube a lot. God bless, Justin. Justin, did you not receive this email also on April 16th? Or did you receive all of these emails and do nothing about it? You fraudulent liar, you. Justin Peters knew there was a problem with Doreen as far back as November 30th, 2019. 
when he responded and says, I don't know her well, but she says she was saved. Are you saying she's promoting that now? As of November 30th, 2019, Justin knew there was cause to look into her. And if you didn't, Justin, you're even more negligent than I gave you credit for. And if you did, which I bet you did, you're a worse liar than Benny Hinn. To whom much is given, much will be required. For five months, Justin said nothing. He says, if I had known, I I would have sought clarification. But you didn't do that, did you, Justin? You didn't seek clarification. You sought silence. You just hoped you would never have to deal with it. Why? Were you just playing follow the leader? Well, if Phil Johnson said she was okay, well, I don't want to make him look foolish. Was that your reasoning? Well, if Costi Hinn approved of her, well, I don't want to be the one to go against the grain. Was that your reasoning? You follower, you panderer, you liar, Justin? Five months you knew about this testimony and did nothing? Justin Peters is disqualified from ministry altogether. For five months he knew about this and said nothing. He did nothing. Justin Peters proves his hatred for Doreen Virtue. Because despite knowing this, he never went to her and said, Hey, Doreen, you know, I'm concerned about you. I read your testimony. It's not biblical. As a brother in the Lord, or one I hope to be a brother in the Lord, I, I got to tell you, something's not right about this. And you, you're definitely not qualified to be teaching others. And um, you, you need to reevaluate this. Why do you think this was the way it was? He didn't even bother to confront Doreen Virtue on this. Why? Because Justin Peters loves Justin Peters. Justin Peters knew there was a problem November 30th and said nothing until he was forced to say something and go into damage control along with Doreen Virtue. Justin, you big liar, you. If anyone's supporting Justin Peters after this, they prove themselves to be just as disqualified as him. Let's continue and just blasted me for, you know, how could you be so, if you did not know, how could you not have known this? How could you not have done your homework? And you know what? I admit that. I own that. I just did a few minutes ago. Uh-huh. I apologize for that. Yep. Had I done that and come across all of these really troubling things that Joshua has documented in his video, mm-hmm. uh, I would have sought clarification from her on all these things. I would have sought clarification. You would have, but uh, you're lying because you didn't. Did you just not care to look into these troubling things? When multiple people emailed you and said, Justin, this is dangerous. Justin, this is troubling. Justin, will you please look into this? Justin, did you know about this? Did you even bother to seek clarification? Did you even bother to look into it? Because one of the things he says is, well, Josh could have emailed me. He never emailed me. Everybody else did, and you ignored them, Justin. What a liar. Boy, when you thought it couldn't get any worse. What a liar Justin Peters is. And he bends over backwards to defend her. Here's, here's a statement that he posted on, uh, on the video I made. Which, by the way, I, I didn't delete his comment. In fact, I pinned it. I'll give you. A, I'll, I'll let you have your fair say, Justin. I'm going to post a comment on his YouTube channel with a link to this video. Let's see if he deletes it. I suspect he will. Here's what he says. Uh, I'm going to paste what I wrote to someone else. Listen, I number one, I did not know this part of Doreen's testimony when I did the interview with her. All I knew is that she had been saved out of New Age. That's it. Okay. Grossly negligent for starters, but second of all, he says, when I did the interview. So when did you find out, Justin? Tell the world, please. Tell the world when you found out about this. Because if you say you only found out when you watch my video, you're a liar. Everybody knows you're a liar. You know you got those emails. You got four distinct emails warning you about her. One of them that had probably 20 different video links for you to watch the testimony. And you did nothing. You sat on that information and did nothing. Because you're a liar, Justin Peters. I didn't know anything. Pontius Peters strikes again. 
In the interview I did with Doreen, I strongly taught against God speaking in dreams and visions, and that his only mode of speaking today is through Scripture. Yeah, of course you did. Your, your entire existence is based on basically this teaching. I'm very consistent in this. You're consistent in saying one thing and doing another. That's what you're... Yeah, your speech is consistent, isn't it? Doreen emailed me two very kind emails this morning apologizing for Joshua dragging me into this video. Oh, the poor victim who files fraudulent copyright strikes to silence public opposition. She's devious. She's not a victim. Doreen told me she actually learned much during my interview with her. She is humble and teachable, unlike some. Let's just start with that one. Let's start with Doreen being humble and teachable. Now, mind you, the whole time he's writing this, he knew that he knew about her testimony for five months. He knew while writing this that he had known this information for five months and said nothing. That's why he got upset. That's why he started panicking. That's why he knew, oh, no, now I have to deal with this. Because he was too much of a coward to deal with it when he found out. Two days after the interview. November 30th, 2019. Wow. Let's hear him just raving about how teachable Doreen is. And that you are consistent in your teaching that visions and dreams are not biblical. I learned a lot from you during the interview. She learned a lot. As I went to Hebrews 1, did you notice her affirmation? Yes. Yes, she's a flatterer. She knows how to flatter and pander to people. Gullible, ridiculous people like Justin. Justin is easily bewitched. But you would have also seen Doreen's very um, affirming responses to the things I taught. You would have seen how warmly she received mm. the things that I taught. You, you would see that she grew in her understanding, even in that very interview, wow. in real time. You would have seen that. Wow. Joshua, so if there are no more apostles today, and there aren't, then... Um, then how do you have apostolic gifts? Hmm. So, oh, that's a really good point. It's an umbrella then. It is. But what I really want everyone to take note of in that previous clip, did you notice how that was a bit of a light bulb moment for Doreen? She said, ah, oh, that's a really good point. It was a, it was a light bulb moment for us. In other words, what you're seeing literally right in front of your very eyes is some previous erroneous uh, beliefs that she may have had uh, are now being corrected because she's coming into a more full understanding of Scripture. And, and literally right in front of your eyes, you're seeing her theology develop. She's coming into a better understanding of the Word of God. She's wow. growing in the grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. She's growing in her understanding of the Word of God, just like you would expect huh. a believer to do. Wow, let's take a look at Doreen's light bulb moment, because this is about the light bulb going on with Doreen Virtue. It's uh, it's smoking and burnt out and cracked. Oh, she's learning. She's just a baby Christian. She doesn't know any better. You want to address the elephant in the room, Justin, as to why she's teaching people publicly, sometimes hundreds of thousands? She's got a book deal. The list goes on. Not one person thought to tell her, hey, you know, it doesn't sound like you know what you're talking about. Maybe you should be quiet and sit down somewhere. She can't. She loves the attention. She made a lateral move from the New Age to Christianity. She saw an open market. Oh, no, she's just a new believer. She loves the truth. She loves attention. If she loved the truth, she'd shut up and stop teaching people. She doesn't even know what she believes. Somebody described her as doing on-the-job training. That's right. But Justin says, didn't you see how she was learning, how teachable she is? Well, let's evaluate just how much Doreen has learned since their interview. November 28th, 2019. Right? Justin says, Doreen learned. She learned that dreams and she was learning right there. <gasps> you know, never mind the fact that she didn't say, hey, Justin, as we're speaking... Pinned to my YouTube channel is a testimony of a wild vision of Jesus. Are you telling me that's wrong? You know why she didn't say that? Because Doreen Virtue, fake name, is devious and a liar. She's not honest. If she was so teachable, Justin, why didn't she tell you that her whole 
Christian testimony is based on a vision. Why didn't she say, huh? Because I've been telling people for three years, Justin, that I've had this vision. Or for two years at the time. How come she didn't say that? Because she's not teachable. She's proud and devious. November 28th, they had the interview. Here's what she said three weeks later when she was talking to Justin's partner in ministry, Chris Rosebro, the bumbling hypocrite. She told Chris Rosebro to his face about this vision. And this so-called, you know, near-Catholic impersonating discerner, right, who dresses up in his priestly collar and drives a, a pirate Christian mobile, She told him to his face she had a vision. You know what he said? Nothing. Justin's partner in ministry heard about this vision. His whole existence is calling out visions of Jesus and the charismatic movement along with Justin. The lowest of the low-hanging fruit. Because that's all he's got to offer. Then this woman, who flatters him and he loves it so, flatters him. She tells him about her crazy vision of Jesus He doesn't bat an eyelash. He didn't ask a follow-up question. He didn't say, hey, I don't believe in that sort of thing. Nothing. This was December uh, 18th. December 18th, she goes on the Pirate Christian Hypocrite Show and tells him this. I had a vision on January 7th, 2017 at church, um, and and I saw a vision of Jesus. He wasn't moving around like he was a personal, you know, vision coming to me. It was more like... Uh, kind of a glimpse in heaven, I guess, like the veil was lifted is what it seemed like. And, and the light coming out of his heart uh, was brighter than anything I've ever seen. Wow. So the pirate Christian hypocrite, Justin's friend in ministry, see, Justin said he would have sought clarification. Well, what about Chris Rosebro? He didn't seek clarification. Would you like to have a conversation with your bumbling hypocrite friend, uh, Chris Rosebro, Justin? And ask him why he didn't seek clarification? Of course you wouldn't. Because when people emailed you and apprised you of the testimony, you lied. You didn't seek clarification either. Neither one of you care because you're both frauds. You're frauds in the business of business. Oh, Kenneth Copeland is bad. Benny Hinn's bad. But as long as this flattering woman approves of your ministry and and gives you a platform and access to all of her followers, you just eat it up like honey. Her words drip like honey. Sound familiar? Yeah. Read through Proverbs 7 when you got a little time on your hands. That's how much she learned from Justin Peters. Three weeks later, she's still affirming her vision of Jesus. But five months later, on April 29th, she went on something called The Bar Podcast and again defended her vision of Jesus. We went to an Episcopal church. And- April 29th, 2020. And, the, and at the Episcopal Church, I, I, um, I just got convicted one day, um, and I know it sounds really weird. I, I'm kind of a cessationist myself now, but... Kind of. She's just kind of a cessationist. I, I saw this vision of Jesus in heaven. It was like mm. the, the veil opened for me, and, and, uh-huh. uh, and it, it wasn't demons because it pointed me to study the Bible and, wasn't and get out of the New Age. And, mm-hmm. and right after that, it was January... Uh, 7th 2017 so so how much did she learn five months prior justin because five months later it doesn't sound like she learned anything she's still affirming validating and defending her vision of jesus as not demonic so her email to you is completely disingenuous oh i learned so much it appears that i taught her more in a day than you did in five months. Because right after my video, she starts scrubbing her testimony from the internet. It's called damage control. Hmm. So here's what she said 11 days after defending the testimony, which by the way, this only came a few days after my first video. I made the video on uh, May 5th, and by May 10th, she was scrambling to do damage control, and here's what she said. Oh, by the way, this is a clip from the video that I made of hers. But ju- just to reiterate, uh, Doreen, since I know you have a, a tendency to uh, do things that you shouldn't do. Um, me playing this clip 
is for the purpose of criticism and commentary and teaching, Doreen. Okay? It's transformative in nature. It's not intended to be a market substitute for any copyrighted material of yours. I am clearly playing this brief clip and any brief clip hereafter for the specific purpose of commentary and criticism. So if you file another fraudulent copyright strike, you will be held accountable by law. And if you're doing it right now, if you're thinking about doing it, know that you're doing it in bad faith under penalty of perjury. Because I am telling you right now the intentions, which should be obvious, but if I have to spell it out for you, fair use, as was decided by the... Um, gosh, I think it was the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, said that fair use is not just excused by the law, Doreen. It is wholly authorized by the law, meaning I have a right to do this, and you trying to stop my right to do that is ridiculous. And if you file a false claim, it's perjury. Keep that in mind, Doreen. Um, this, this is what she said five days after my video. After all she learned from Justin Peters, this is what she says five days after the video I made happened to me on January 7th, 2017. I can't explain it from a biblical perspective. It's, it is unbiblical. So it's like, oh, now it's unbiblical. 11 days before this, it wasn't demons. Five days after my video, uh, it was unbiblical. Sounds like, it sounds like you guys should be thanking me. From a biblical perspective, it's, it is unbiblical. So it's likely it was a demon impersonating Jesus. But like I said, he should lose his job as a demon because it ended up pointing me to the Bible. Or if it was really Jesus, I'll know when I get to heaven. In the very same breath, and please watch my video, Damage Control uh, and Deception, the thumbnail looks like this right here. That's the video that prompted her to copyright strike two videos, and this was just reinstated by YouTube. Please go watch it for the full waffling back and forth damage control that she's uh, trying to do here. So she says, um, in the same breath, I know it's unbiblical, but then she concludes by saying, if it was really Jesus, I'll know when I get to heaven. It was so unbiblical that maybe it happened. Do you see how absurd? She's trying to have her cake and eat it too. She's trying to play both sides of this field. I know it's unbiblical. I don't know what happened. Uh, maybe it was a demon, but he should lose his demon job. Really? A demon led you to Jesus? I can only assume somebody must have seen that and told her, that sounds even worse. You don't know what you're talking about. Uh, uh, Satan impersonating Jesus led you to the truth? Satan does what Satan doesn't do? What are you talking about? What's this new theology that even the heretic of heretics don't affirm? Demons led me to Jesus? They should be fired for being good helpers? So what'd she do? She deleted that video. She has a long history of putting stuff up and taking it down. You know why? Because she doesn't know what she believes, and she wants to teach everybody else. It's a, it's a big old trial and error. Ah, throw this out. Oh, that didn't work. I'll pull it down. Throw this out. No. Nah. Oh, that didn't work. Oh, somebody wants to talk about it? Hit them with a copyright strike. Pfft. Ridiculous. Eight days later, eight days after she said it was unbiblical, and maybe it was a demon impersonating Jesus, she came up with this doozy, damage control of the damage control. Doreen the neutral ent enters the picture. This is how teachable she is. Justin Peter says she's so teachable. She learned so much. Here's what she says now. So to have this apologetic experience all at once, that maybe the vision was my imagination because I was getting visions all the time as a new ager or a demon, but the realizations maybe came from God to protect me because after all, I was headed to becoming an NAR, New Apostolic Reformation prophetess uh -huh. at that time. So... I don't know yet. Uh, I'm not prepared to make a statement. I can't 100% confirm. I don't want to make a mistake, so I'm staying neutral on this oh. until I can do more research, more prayer, of course, and keep talking to godly brothers and sisters. Wait, wait a second. N now you don't know? She said, I'm not prepared to make a statement. Literally, 10 days before this, she did make a statement. Then she unmade the statement and said she wants to stay neutral. Here's my theory. And I suspect there's a lot to be said for this. Dorian Bur Virtue has a book published by Thomas Nelson called Deceive No More. The irony of the title is unbearable. That's due to be released Jan uh, July 28th, I believe. 
I suspect strongly that that testimony is in that book. And it's already been published. It's already been printed. It's just waiting to be released. She's probably having a publishing crisis. Because what's going to happen when that book is released and her testimony's in it? Is she going to give the proceeds away? Is she going to call Thomas Nelson and tell him to stop? All good questions. Trust me, we're going to follow up. Doreen, you have my personal promise that I will give that book a personal and thorough review. And if that testimony's in it, we're going to talk to everybody about what a liar you are. Because on May uh, 10th, you said it was demons and it was unbiblical. Eight days later, you said you're unsure and you're not prepared to make a statement. Justin, you want to tell me more about just how teachable Doreen Virtue is? She's so teachable, she wants to have her cake and eat it too. It wasn't demons. Maybe it was a demon. Now I'm unsure. She's unsure about what you call demonic, Justin. Would you still like to defend Doreen Virtue publicly? Her official statement is she's unsure about what Justin Peters says is demonic. Good luck with that. Brothers and sisters. Did you notice how that was a bit of a light bulb moment for Doreen? Yeah, like I said, that light bulb burned out a long time ago. Justin is trying to defend her to salvage his own reputation. And remember, all the time he's talking about that light bulb moment, he knew about her false vision of Jesus testimony for five months and did nothing. Nothing. Wow, Justin Peters. Please watch the video, Damage Control and Deception. You'll see her back and forth, back and forth. But when this was made, it was nine days after this video, uh, or sorry, uh, sev seven days after this video, May 18th, that she issued the new uh, clarification testimony where now she's unsure. So she went from, it happened, it was three-dimensional, I saw the real Jesus, to um, maybe it was a demon that led me to Jesus, to I don't want to make a statement, now I'm unsure. You've made so many statements, you're getting lost in your own web of lies, Doreen. She's so teachable that she's unsure. She's unsure, Justin. What, what happened to the light bulb? Good luck. Let's see if that testimony is in her book, Deceive No More. I'll be looking for it. Don't I wouldn't buy it if I were you. <clears throat> but uh, I'll buy it on your behalf if you're curious. We're going to talk much more about Thomas Nelson and Doreen's book deal in the future. But I suspect that's what accounts for all this waffling and damage control. Because if that testimony's in the book, she can't disregard it altogether. Otherwise, how are they going to sell the book? So she has to... Uh, she's trying to... Apparently, this is my theory. I could be wrong. It appears that she's trying to probably appease and salvage her book deal and also her friendship with Justin Peters and cessationism over here. How do you do that? Well, she she becomes Switzerland. I don't know. I just, I, you know, I'm in the middle. I'm just an innocent Christian. I don't know anything. Maybe you should stop trying to teach people because we know you don't know anything. There's There's no problem not knowing stuff. The problem comes when you pretend that you know things you don't know and you deceive other people in the process. Then you lie about it, whitewash it, and try to punish people for pointing it out ridiculous. This is who Justin Peters defends. What does he say? You could have emailed me, right? Point number four here. Joshua could have emailed me privately asking me if I knew of the visions. He has my email address and we have exchanged several in the past, but just like his previous video, he prefers to shoot first and ask questions later. Emailing me privately first would have been the right thing to do, but that would take motivation rooted in integrity and concern for genuine truth as opposed to motivation rooted in simply tearing down others. Well, Justin, if I had emailed you, would you have ignored it like you did the four emails that you got from other people? Don't act so righteous, you liar. November 30th, December 6th, December 22nd, April 16th. How come you didn't respond to those emails? You responded to one and then ignored the rest. Would you like to tell the world, Justin, honestly, before God, that you never got those emails? That somehow, in a magic coincidence, you three emails, you just never got them? Even if you go with that, how do you explain the one you responded to two days after the interview? Where somebody said, she's promoting the occult. Why don't you look into her? 
and you even asked a clarifying question. How do you explain that one? Don't act like you were concerned about my emails or I could have emailed you privately because I've tried to do this before. Let me share with you what I tried to share with Justin as far back as 2016. Watch Pontius Peter's. He wants to wash his hands. He wouldn't have been concerned about this. That, there's no wonder that he ignored those emails. He's got a history of ignoring things that are critical of his friends and might make him look bad. Here we go. This is my email to Justin Peters, February 8, 2016, at approximately 6.53 p.m. Justin, or This is Justin's response to me. I, I'd sent him an email saying, Justin, will you please read these scriptures? Talking about John MacArthur... Um, his, his partnering with uh, John Piper and uh, Matt Chandler and a whole bunch of problems. And he says, no, I will not look those verses up because I know what they are. Many of them I have memorized. See, Justin's too proud to take correction from anybody else. He won't even look verses up because he memorized everything. Here's what he said to me. You need to email Phil Johnson if you're so exercised about this. I seriously doubt your motivations in this. Very seriously doubt them. Why? Because Phil Johnson's his friend. He has to doubt them. If you were genuinely concerned about the purity of the gospel and you believe John MacArthur to be in sin, then you should go to him first. Now he wants me to go to John MacArthur. Good luck. It's a ridiculous suggestion that anybody's going to have a private meeting with John MacArthur. <laughs> I'd, li- I'd love to see anybody. Tell me any, any of you that can email John MacArthur and ask him a question. It's never going to happen. I should go to John MacArthur first, he says, or at least someone who has his ear, like Phil Johnson. You should not be coming to me, Pontius Peters. Hey, I don't, don't bother me with this. What, what do I have to do with it? I gave you Phil's email address. Watch this. But for some reason, you would rather badger me than contact him. That's how he would have responded about the Doreen Virtue thing. Hey, don't badger me, Josh. Go to Doreen. But now he's acting like if I would have emailed him first, he was going to do something about it. No, Justin, you're a liar. You wouldn't have done something about it because you didn't do something about it, even when you acknowledged other people's emails to you. I live 1,300 miles away from John MacArthur and have only been around him in person a handful of time. Phil sees him every, nearly every day. Your refusal to go to the primary source gives me serious doubts as to how altruistic your concerns are. So what would your response have been if I emailed you, Justin? Don't badger me, go to the primary source? Or would you just have ignored me like you did the other people? Justin is a disingenuous liar. I want to say something about Joshua Chavez. I first, my paths first crossed with him, uh, I don't know, five years or so ago. Roughly. He called me and initially he seemed teachable. Initially he seemed um, nice and like he he wanted to learn was teachable. But uh, as the conversations went on, a few of them, he just became increasingly um, hyper, hyper critical. First of all, no. Look, look how he frames it. Th- this man is so proud, he must frame it this way. Well, initially, he seemed teachable, like he wanted to learn. Hey, newsflash, Justin. I didn't call you to get advice. I didn't call you to ask you a doctrinal question. I called to warn you and plead with you to do something about the people that you promote. He says, well, initially, he seemed teachable. He thinks the only reason somebody can talk to him is to get advice from him. That's how proud he is, because he's not teachable. I didn't ask Justin for advice. I didn't say, hey, I'm struggling with an issue. I called him and tried to tell him, Justin, I've got a concern here. I gave him the benefit of the doubt. I was very cordial. And despite his soft southern accent, right, and his his, his seeming uh, uh, genuine attitude, he's a feisty an agitated man, especially when he's questioned. I didn't call to ask you a question. I seem teachable. No, you seem unteachable. You're so proud that you can't even consider for a moment somebody might have something to teach you, Justin. And I tried to, he said, well, he just became increasingly critical. He must frame it that way. The problem is not that I became hypercritical. The problem is that he became so apathetic, it's ridiculous. Oh, critical that John Piper's doing Lectio Divina with Beth Moore? Oh, you bet I'm being critical about that, Justin. See, 
when Justin is critical of Benny Hinn, etc., it's justified, it's righteous. But if you're critical of anyone that he might even be close to, it's a travesty because he's not teaching. Look at how he defends Doreen Virtue. Bends over backwards. When people email him, he ignores them. Justin can't be taught. He's a proud man. Okay, monetized. Uh, point number five on his response here. Joshua's channel, look at him scrambling for everything. He wants to call Mia, oh, he's just got an I gotcha ministry. He's scrambling for everything to do with something else other than Doreen Virtue claims to have seen a false vision of, a, a vision of Jesus, which is false. Never mind the fact that her name is Doreen Virtue. She finally admitted this. Fake name, fake testimony, lying woman. That's who Justin approves of. Watch this, though. Joshua's channel is monetized. I've seen advertisements for Pure Flix on his videos. Listen to this. Pure Flix is a Christian film company that produces movies that are chock full of the nuttiest, craziest, charismatic mysticism this side of Sid Roth. I agree. Joshua is literally making money off of the very thing, very thing he attacks me and others for being even tangentially connected to, in his mind anyway. My YouTube channel is not monetized at all. Justin's got a real problem with the monetized YouTube channel, <clears throat> it would appear. Let's listen to him again. Joshua, I don't think your YouTube channel, monetized though it is, Ooh monetized though it is justin's got a problem with the very idea of monetization and certainly pure flicks it's chock full of the nuttiest craziest wackiest uh, uh, charismatic stuff this side of sid roth well i made an entire video denouncing pure flicks denouncing it i'm on a public record stating how bad it is and warning people not to do business with them and you'll see the three people featured here, Ray Comfort, Ken Ham, and uh, Kirk Cameron. Some people that Justin Peters knows very well. You're going to see Just Justin's P Peters cascading hypocrisy here. We'll start with his bumbling hypocrite friend, uh, Chris Rosebro. This is his partner in ministry, Chris Rosebro. They were planning to do a conference called Reading Reformation. Um, uh, they've been friends for a long time, old Chris and Justin. Here's uh, Chris Rosebro's YouTube channel. Let's check it out. Here we are on Chris Rosebro's YouTube page, and uh, I'm just going to pick a, I'm just going to pick a video at random. And this is a video that I recorded uh, probably the day after uh, Justin made his response, or so somewhere in there, something like that. Uh, I don't remember the exact date, but uh, the beginning of May. This is about a month ago. And, uh, we'll see what happens. March prophecy bingo. You're watching it one? happen. Wow, a Pure Flix ad on a Chris Rosebro video. So wait, it's monetized, Justin, and there's a Pure Flix ad. <gasps> Are you gonna rebuke your friend Chris Rosebro for having a monetized YouTube channel, making money off of the wackiest, kookiest, nuttiest stuff this side of Sid Roth? I bet you won't, you hypocrite. You won't even answer an email regarding Doreen Virtue. You won't even look into it. Because you're a fraudulent hypocrite. Chris Rosebro, monetized. Let me just pause this. Listen. I want you to see how that took precisely one click. Yep. One click on a Chris Rosebro ad, and boom, it's monetized, and boom, there's a Pure Flix ad. So good luck not being a hypocrite even more, Justin. When can we anticipate your public rebuke of Chris Rosebro for having a monetized channel since you seem to think that any hint of monetization is unthinkable? My channel's not monetized. Well, your friend Chris is. is. Are you okay with that? Or is it just my channel? Well, wh which one is it, Justin? But wait. His friend Chris is so bad? This is a screenshot of a video that he did uh, called, uh, whatever, Unmet Expectations. Now, any of you who are even cursorily familiar with YouTube will recognize these little uh, yellow tabs at the very bottom on the uh, timeline here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Those indicate ten spots in which an ad has been placed. Ten. 
However bad, Justin, you think I am, your partner in ministry, Chris Rosebro, is 10 times worse. And that's quantifiable. It's so bad that Chris Rosebro's own followers commented on just how ridiculously over-monetized his videos are. Can't wait to hear your comment on this, Justin. Let's, let's see what they had to say. So this is from, uh, what date is this? Uh, well, whenever he, the, the name of the video is Jason Howard's Unmet Expectations, and it, it was five hours after that was published. So whatever date that was, okay? This is just a, a, live, a, a video that I had filmed live at the time, scrolling down through the comments, right? Scrolling down, scrolling down. What do the people have to say? Remind you, 10 ads on the video. Here's the first one. Let's highlight that and pause it. Hopefully you can read that. Holy cow, Chris is getting that ad revenue. Good luck, Justin. And he's getting it from PureFlix, I guess. That's what you think, right? The nuttiest, kookiest, wackiest stuff. Holy cow, Chris is getting that ad revenue. That's how monetized Chris Rosebro's channel is. People have to comment with expressions like, holy cow. But wait, there's more. Wonder what Justin will say here. Scrolling down here. And what does this one say? I have never seen this many ads before. Mind blown. Justin Peters, the hypocrite. Will he remain silent? My prediction? Yes, he must. That's what hypocrites do. They have double standards. So my channel's monetized, he says, and his isn't, and that's why Justin's so noble. Yet his hypocrite friend Chris Rosebro's channel is so monetized that his own followers comment, I've never seen this many ads before, and holy cow, Chris is getting that ad revenue. Good luck with that one, Justin. Will Pontius Peters pretend he didn't see that too? I bet he and will. So Oh, remember, uh, Chris Rosebro is the one that uh, heard this vision of Jesus and just casually well, I had accepted a vision it. On January seventh, two thousand seventeen, remember at that? church. Yeah. Um, and it, and I saw a vision of Jesus. He wasn't moving around mm -hmm. like he was a personal. Yeah. Right. You know, vision coming right. to me. It was more like a, kind of a glimpse in heaven, I guess. Glimpse in heaven, like no the question. The veil was lifted. The veil was lifted, like, and, and the light coming light? out of his heart. Light coming out of his heart uh, was brighter than anything i've ever brighter seen brighter than anything she's ever seen and what did chris rosebro say nothing nothing because he's ridiculous and he doesn't have discernment you know what he has he's got business mindedness he's climbing the ladder of discernment that's what he that's what he's doing uh, I just thought this was interesting. Chris Rosebro uh, recently called me the Adam Schiff of discernment. That's clever. Uh, except for its uh, misattribution. Um, here's an article about Adam Schiff who's being sued. Listen to this. Um, a lawsuit was filed uh, against Adam Schiff uh, in the U.S. District Court of the District of Columbia. Plaintiffs allege that defendant Adam Schiff has abused government power and infringed on their f free speech rights. Here's what it says. Who appointed Congressman Adam Schiff as censor-in-chief? Asked the AAPS general counsel. No one did, and he should not be misusing his position to censor speech on the Internet. In February and, uh, and March of 2019, represent Representative Schiff contacted Google, Facebook, and Amazon to encourage them to deplatform or discredit what Schiff asserted to be inaccurate information on vaccines. He then posted the letters and press release on the House.gov website. Sound like anyone? I don't know. Doreen Virtue, for example? That's in It's amazing, isn't it? Doreen Virtue contacts YouTube, signs documents under penalty of perjury to try to have me silenced, while Justin Peters is leveling copyright strikes of his own against other channels, let him tell you about it. It sounds like your friend, Chris, Doreen, is the real Adam Schiff of discernment. Who does that make you, Pelosi? I, I don't know which one's which, but it's just amazing that Chris Rosebro would refer to me as the Adam Schiff of discernment when his devious friend, Doreen Virtue, um, literally uh, tried to have me silenced 
and censor my speech on the internet, just like Adam Schiff. Just like Adam Schiff. It's absolutely incredible. Um, in that, uh, it's worth mentioning, in the comment that Chris Rosebro made, which apparently uh, another email was sent to me where Justin Peters mentioned this too and said, oh, I can't wait to tell everyone about this. Um, Chris Rosebro said, uh, Josh was caught pretending to be a woman. Um, uh, and then he called me the Adam Schiff of uh, discernment. Uh, uh, he was caught pretending to be a woman named Lydia. And um, right, like, like it's this big scandal. Uh, well, there's an element of truth in this, and I'll just address this head on. This is their big uh, trump card. Good luck, fellas. Uh, over a year ago, I made a comment to an individual who I'm going to leave unnamed. Um, if she wants to mention it, she can. Um, and I changed the name of the profile I commented to the name Lydia. And there's a reason for this. And the individual to whom I directed the comment knows the reason for this. In fact, we have since spoken. We spoke for about four hours personally about the, this is a much more involved uh, episode that I have time to get into. It was a very involved episode. And I told her the reason I switched my name is because I had, I wanted to ask you a sincere question, but the animosity between us personally was going to completely eclipse that. And I knew I wouldn't get a genuine answer. So they never talk about the substance of what I asked because I, I didn't comment under some alias name uh, for the purposes of doing some nefarious or creepy thing. It was a legitimate question, which is what's ignored. This was well over a year ago and the person it was directed to I've since spoken to personally. She understands. She said, I understand. We talked about this at length. So she knows why I did it. She was no longer offended after we talked about it. But somebody else heard about this and they want to be offended on behalf of the person who's already forgotten about it. Who knows exactly what happened. To say that I was pretending to be a woman is a bit of a stretch. In fact... It's false witness. It's so much of a stretch. Did I change the name? Yes. Did I change it to a female name? Yes. And for what purpose? For the purpose of eliciting a genuine response from her. I explained all of this to her. Uh, I'm not even saying it was the right thing to do. I'm, I'm, that's, not, that's not even what I'm saying. What I'm saying is the person that I talked to, that, that this was directed toward, I've talked to them personally, face-to-face, -face, effectively via a, a phone conference chat. We've talked about this, and she understands why I said what I said and why I did what I did. So, that's your, that's your big... Uh, I pretended to be a woman? I got caught pretending to be a woman? I'll, I'll, give, you, I'll give you credit for saying, uh, oh, yeah, it was found out that I commented under a different name, and there was a reason for it, and the person to whom it was directed, I talked to them personally. And if she forgot about it, maybe you should too. Here's why this is particularly interesting. Chris Rosebro and Justin Peters have a conference partner named Jordan Hall, J.D. Hall, uh, author at Pulpit and Pen. Um... J.D. Hall literally uh, addresses in gay drag to try to infiltrate conferences. Here's a video of him dressing up as a gay man. Hey, this is J.D. Hall. Uh, I'm in St. Louis at the Revoice Conference, and this is as gay as I could look. Tried to get in. Wow. Comments, Chris? What, what would your defense of your friend and buddy Jordan Hall be? Right? You're claiming I pretended to be a woman. Uh, I didn't wear a costume, Chris. Do you only approve of costumes? Is that what it is? What would your defense of this be? Well, he was doing it to try to get information because he knew they wouldn't give it to him. At <gasps> oh, really? Is that what your defense would be? Hmm. Maybe you should reevaluate your criticism of me, Chris. I changed the name and made a single comment and then spoke to the person personally about why I did that. Your friend dresses up in costume and pretends to be gay. So let's not act so self-righteous, you hypocrites. Nice try, though. Here's Justin Peters. 
with his friend Ray Comfort. And this is a whole defense of, you know, because Ray Comfort spends a lot of time on uh, TBN, right? Heresy Network. I have something to say to those who are critical of Ray Comfort and my friendship with and support of him. It's too long to put in a tweet, so please read the attached screenshot. He goes into how Ray's made some bad decisions. They talked about it. Ray told him he was going to be more cautious in the future. Ray went on Joyce Meyer's program, uh, uh, Matt and Lori Crouch, right? He, Ray Comfort um, doesn't have a whole lot of discernment. But because Ray Comfort and Todd Friel are really good friends, Justin can't just discard that. So he does damage control on behalf of Ray Comfort. And here's what he said. Uh, okay. Listen. We are now at... Or here's what I said. Sorry. This is another pre-recorded video of Living Waters Ministries, uh, Ray Comfort's channel. Okay. We are now at Living Waters' YouTube channel, which is uh, led by Ray Comfort, of course, founded by Ray Comfort, a good friend of Justin Peters. Just clicked on the video called He Puts Pressure on Ray Comfort, their newest one from May 5th. And what do we got here? Pure Flicks. Wow. Ray Comfort. So yet I another one of Justin Peters' friends who has a monetized YouTube channel with a Pure Flicks ad. That's something, isn't it? Is Justin Peters going to condemn Ray Comfort? I doubt it. Justin Peters won't condemn Ray Comfort because he can't condemn Ray Comfort because he's a hypocrite and that's his friend. But Justin Peters doesn't have a monetized channel. Ray Comfort does. So now what, Justin? Are you going to make a wave about Ray Comfort having a monetized YouTube channel or are you going to just be the consummate hypocrite we all know you are? Let's continue. Ken Ham, also a friend of Justin Peters. Uh, and a conference partner of Justin Peters. Let's go to uh, let's go over to Ken Ham's YouTube channel. Okay, so we are on uh, Ken Ham's YouTube ch uh, channel now, which is uh, Answers in Genesis, of course. And Ken Ham is a great friend of Justin Peters as well. And uh, let's go ahead and click on uh, a video here. Uh, Ken Ham, an exciting new Answers in Genesis project for the whole family. Let's click that. A lot of people are wondering, what's the deal with the Book of Mormon? Mormon. Ken Ham's channel is not only monetized, but there's ads for Mormonism on it. So what does that mean, Justin? Does that mean he's making money off the Mormon church? Or do you want to rephrase your critique of me? You maybe want to reevaluate it, or can we please uh, g get your formal rebuke to Ken Ham for not only monetizing his channel, but apparently doing business with the Mormons? Is that what you think? Or do you think uh, maybe you're shooting from the hip a little bit, Justin? Chris Rosebro, Ray Comfort, Ken Ham, all monetized channels, ads for pure flicks, and Mormonism. Good luck, Justin. You know what's interesting? If we go to Pure Flix, remember the one that Justin Peters says they put all kinds of kooky stuff out. I remember the that. The worst stuff this side of Sid Roth. Let's go see the channels Pure Flix promotes. <gasps> Isn't that something? Let's pause it. Answers in Genesis. Ken Ham, Living Waters. Three of ten channels promoted on Pure Flix. Pure Flix promotes ten total channels. Remember the movie company? that's chock full of the wackiest, nuttiest stuff this side of Sid Roth? Why are they promoting Answers in Genesis, Ken Ham, and Living Waters? Well, because Justin's friends are in formal, contractual partnership with Pure Flix. Great news! This is on the Answers in Genesis website. Answers in Genesis partners with PureFlix.com. Justin, do you have anything to say about your friend partnering with the wackiest, nuttiest, kookiest thing? This side of Sid Roth? Y you got anything to say about that? Or is it okay for your friends to do business with uh, promoters of wackiness? Hmm? Hypocrite? Anything to say? I didn't think so. Ray Comfort and Ken Ham on the Pure Flix website. Apologist Ken Ham and Ray Comfort join forces to change culture. Here's the Pure Flix website. Way of the Master Radio on Pure Flix. Here's a tweet from Pure Flix. Inspire your faith. Sign up for a free month of Pure Flix and watch Way of the Master. That's right. You can find Ray Comfort's program now, I think, exclusively on Pure Flix. What do you think, Justin? You want to reevaluate your ridiculous double uh, standard critique of me, or are you going to rebuke your friends? I already know the answer. 
You're going to do nothing. You'll stay silent like you did uh, to those emails. Remember when everyone tried to warn you about Doreen Virtue and you just pretended like you didn't get them? Remember that? For five months? Not even five months later, a response? And then you responded to one and, and did nothing? Brilliant. Here's what he says <clears throat> about a phone call. The very bottom there. <clears throat> I, I'll also add that Joshua, I refuse to call him Service Christy because he is no servant of Christ. Sticking it to me, Justin secretly recorded a phone conversation we had a few years ago in which he tried to get me to disparage John MacArthur. Lie, I didn't try to get you to do anything but acknowledge what was obvious. He acts like I was calling to get him to say something. No, 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 that's a lie. He put that recording up on YouTube but finally took it down because almost all the comments he was getting uh, took him to task, and rightly so. That's also uh, not true. Uh, that That is not the reason. Uh, the man has no integrity. That's funny, coming from somebody who's ignored dreams and visions for five months and then pretended like he never knew about it. You liar. You have negative integrity, Justin. You've got a surplus of fraudulence. He refers to good, faithful brothers in some of the vilest terms imagine, imaginable. Okay, we'll get to that in a second. But he mentions this phone call. And he mentions it again in his video. In a phone call that he recorded of me, he and I had a phone conversation a few yes. years ago, and he recorded it secretly. Now, he says he didn't secretly record it because he said he just forgot that he recorded all of his phone calls. He said, I record all of my phone calls. And so he said, I didn't think to tell you just because I, in the same way I didn't think to tell you about my serpentine belt or something like that. He used some illustration in his engine you know he just he re apparently records all of his phone calls <clears throat> I mean, who does that who records all of their phone calls but whatever it, it sounds like a high school girl who does that who records he i mean he's disgusted by this notion who does that who records all well we can talk about some specific people we will in a second uh but according to the app that i downloaded over 10 million people justin I mean, who does that? Who records their phone calls? Over 10 million people do that, Justin. Over 10 million people have an app downloaded for various reasons, which records their calls. Various reasons. Who does that? Well, one of Justin's conference partners does that. But um, he was trying to get me to say something negative about John MacArthur. That's a said, lie. You're a b deliberate and blatant false witness and a liar. Of course, you've been proven over and over. You interview in this phone call that he was recording, unbeknownst to me. And then he put it up on his YouTube channel. And then he acts like this was the motive the whole time. Oh, tell me, Justin, <clears throat> why did I have that phone call for over nine months before I did anything with it? Why did you have J.D. Hall call me to talk to me about this? Because you were denying stuff you said in it? Remember when you were defending John Piper and so forth? Well, and making light of things, pretending John MacArthur never made the Mark of the Beast comment he did, telling me that John MacArthur's done more for Christendom than any other single human who's ever existed? You idolater. What an insane comment. Another kind of a gotcha. I had no intention of putting this up. If I did, I would have put it up right away, Justin. I didn't. I had it for months and months. Another kind of a gotcha thing. Oh, another kind of a gotcha thing. Well, let's speak about gotcha people. Justin's conference partner, Jordan Hall. Remember the one who dresses up and pretends to be a gay man? Well, here's what I told Justin in an email, by the way. Uh, February 22nd. Um, that's when we had this correspondence. And I said, Justin, moreover, your friend and or conference partner in ministry, Jordan Hall, has not only secretly recorded myself and others with the expression intention, by the way, of, of release. I, I didn't record Justin. I didn't plan this out. That's what he's, he's saying. Well, he says he didn't do that. Yeah, because I didn't. It, it wasn't a plan. By default, the conversation was recorded. But just uh, JD does this on purpose. Look at not only has he secretly recorded myself and others, <clears throat> but has gone so far as disguise himself as a gay man to get information and literally published an article on pulpit and pen bribing people with Chick-fil-A coupons if they would obtain secret recordings. I sent this to Justin. Here's an excerpt from an article written by your conference partner in ministry. Quote, 
Paul Pen and Pen implied, would like to grease the wheels of information from the Southern Baptist Seminary students and faculty members who have any further audio recordings or information regarding the candid opinions of denominational leaders on the subject of political correctness or wokeness. We are offering $50 gift cards to Chick-fil-A for any such information from SBC students or employees that we can use for publication. While this may not seem like a lot of money, the last we heard, fried chicken is like cocaine to Baptists. Send us your tips and we'll send you fried chicken. And although this may seem like a fun troll, and it is, we are absolutely serious, end quote. What does Justin say when I point out that his friends are bribing people with Chick-fil-A coupons to obtain secret recordings? Pontius Peters strikes again. As for Pulpit and Pen, they're responsible for what they put up, not me. My only contact with uh, them, I suppose, the last couple of years has been to get them to soften their language and tone. That's it. Just soften your language and tone. I don't care what else you do, but he cares what I do. Interesting, isn't it? As for your other videos, I have watched a little of them. I don't buy into your six degrees of separation, Kevin Bacon kind of thinking. Well, Justin, that's not a biblical argument. That's a that's a ridiculous narrative because you can't defend it. So when Justin Peters' conference partner has pointed out as literally bribing people with $50 worth of Chick-fil-A to obtain secret recordings, Justin says, that's on them. What, do I, what does that have to do with me? Well, if that's your case, Justin, what do I have to do with you? What a hypocrite. What an absolute hypocrite Justin is. Then he goes on, I'm just red herring upon red herring, anything to try to tar and feather me here. Here's what he, this is just baffling. Here's what he says about me. Now he says he's got some home church kind of thing that he does with some other, uh, I suppose what he would call like-minded believers. I don't know who they are, how many there are. I don't think there's many of them uh, at all. He doesn't know who they are, how many. He doesn't think they're... He doesn't know anything. He absolutely knows nothing. But um, anyway, he's, he calls this a church, but it's not a church. It's not a church. It doesn't meet the biblical qualifications of a church. Not. How do you know, Justin? You don't know anything. You, you're literally shooting... Them, not literally, but you're figuratively shooting in the dark here. Because they meet in a home. And I understand that a real church is not determined by whether or not you have a brick and mortar structure that you go to. I mean, you can, as, as long as you have a fellowship of believers, like-minded believers mm -hmm. that meet the biblical qualifications of a church and have biblically qualified elders that do church discipline, that mm -hmm. uh, observe the Lord's Supper and believers baptism and all these things, you know, that would be a, a church. Um, I don't care if you meet under a pecan tree. It doesn't matter the location, but hmm. it does matter how the Bible describes a church and defines a church. And but I don't wait. know who they are, how many there are. I don't think there's many of them uh, at all. I don't know who they are, how many there are. I don't think there's many of them uh, at all. But did, did, you, did you take one of Doreen Virtue's old psychic classes, Justin? Did, did you buy a, a pack of her old angel cards? This is ridiculous. I don't know who they are, how many there are. You know nothing. Of course you don't. You're completely ignorant about anything. This is baseless speculation. It is presumptuous false witness. Now, ignorance of a subject, right? No information is now justification for Justin Peters to bear presumptuous false witness and engage in baseless speculation. He admits, well, I don't know how many of them there are. I don't know who they are. I don't, you know nothing, Justin. Of course you don't know anything. And on the basis of your ignorance, you're concluding it must not be biblical because you don't know? Oh, let's play that game, Justin. I don't know where Doreen Virtue goes to church. Therefore, it must not be biblical. I don't know where Todd Friel goes to church. Therefore, it must not be biblical. W would that be a justified conclusion, Justin? Or are you a liar and a false witness? This is how desperate he has become. But he continues. Josh was on record as not believing in pastors and elders, or at least not wanting to submit to them. This despite 
Acts chapter 20, First Peter chapter 5, Hebrews chapter 13, uh, all the biblical qualifications for an elder that Paul lines out in his uh, letter, First Timothy. That you know that they have those qualifications must be there for a reason. Someone must need to fulfill them. But yeah. uh, Joshua doesn't believe in that. But First Timothy, here's here's a video of me. Here's what I'm on record. More proof that Justin is. This is this is not just. He's missing the mark or misrepresenting. This is deliberate, overt, and egregious false witness. He's on record as not believing in any of this. He, he, this video is publicly available. Uh, feel free to go watch it. And I, uh, I'll, I'll clarify in a second. Uh, but here's what I'm on record as teaching on the subject, Justin. But First Timothy chapter 3, um, we have qualifications for overseers and qualifications for deacons, bishops and deacons. That's true. Um, my contention is not that there is no leadership. My contention is that what we describe as a pastor, more specifically, a senior pastor or the head shepherd, the main pastor, you'll find no such thing. Every time you see the word bishop or episcopos, it is in the plural. Every time you see the word presbuteros or elder, it is in the plural. So in the same context, you have elders, bishops, and pastor as a, as a verb to pastor, to shepherd. The elders provided oversight. Um, so bishops, elders, overseers, the leaders within the church functioned as pastors or shepherds. They shepherded the flock. Well, these are qualifications for elders and take note. Remember we read in Acts chapter 14, they appointed elders. Paul and Barnabas had appointed elders. So Paul is instructing Timothy, here's the type of people that should be appointed. If somebody uh, desires the position of a bishop, here's, 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 here's some things this person, some attributes this person should have. So I am on record as clearly defending a plurality of elders. Yes, I take biblical issue with the notion of a monoepiscopate or a monoepiscopacy. And if you have a biblical disagreement about that, Justin, set it up. Would you like to have a debate on ecclesiology? Let me know, Justin. Because by the, by the way, uh, historical groups like the Plymouth Brethren before they went awry, would agree with me on this point. Guys like George Mueller, would you accuse him of what you accuse me of too? You lying, slanderous man, you false witness. I'm on record defending a plurality of elders in no uncertain terms. Josh is on record. He doesn't even believe in this. He doesn't believe in anything. What are you talking about? You just pull things out of thin air. Well, I don't, I don't know who these people are or where they're at, but it can't be biblical. Why? Because it's me? You disgruntled little proud man, you? Hmm. In case he was confused, I gave him written co uh, clarification on this issue as well, because he tried to accuse me of this uh, via email on February 22nd, 2020. Here's what I told him. You continue to bear false witness in your own pride. I've never once stated that pastors or preaching aren't biblical, but have made the case for a plurality of elders. Nor do you have any clue about my fellowship, so you lie by, by presumption. How shameful. I told him, I've never once said this. I told him again, clarifying back in February, and he continues to say, well, he's on record. He didn't even believe in elders. You're a liar, Justin. I don't know how you go to sleep at night. When, when, when that email was sent to you and you responded about Doreen Virtue, oh, is she still teaching occult stuff? Did you just go to bed and ignore it, you liar? Five months you knew about her testimony and did nothing? You're a fraud. You're a fraud. I expect it from Benny Hinn. People think you're above board. You're a fraud. You've been found out, Justin. Uh, this is what he said of... John MacArthur, I just want to read this to you. Justin has remained deafeningly silent, deafeningly silent while his friends in the ministry prostitute themselves, commit spiritual fornication. John MacArthur at this point is a spiritual whore. 
And yes, the terminology is deliberate. Very deliberate. Every time somebody in the Old Testament, when the children of Israel are playing with other gods, playing with people they shouldn't be playing with, God likens it to harlotry, to adultery. It's sexually explicit. Why? Because you're mingling with them. You're mingling. Their spiritually transmitted diseases now become yours. That's what's happening. You're witnessing spiritual whoredom take place, and nobody seems to care. I say this without any sarcasm, without any hyperbole, and I say this without any um, intention of vulgarity because I know this phrase can be misunderstood and mistaken. But if you think John MacArthur is a spiritual whore, oh yeah, and you're gonna if you if you're gonna take your discernment cues from a man who says such things, mm-hmm. then May God help you. Honestly, may God help you. Because I can't. I can't. Justin's just overwhelmed. Like he's never heard the phrase before. I, I just can't believe it. Now, I, now, I don't know. Is is your problem with the, the term spiritual whore? Or is your problem with your idolatry of John MacArthur? Right? If I had described somebody else as a spiritual horror, would that have been okay? Or is it just Sean MacArthur? Or when he says somebody who says such things? Well, I guess Justin's holier than God. Because um, I got this language from the Bible. I'm, I guess Justin Peters missed uh, Ezekiel in all of his uh, Bible studies. Ezekiel sixteen twenty eight: Thou hast played the whore also with the Assyrians. That's what it says. Because thou wast unsatiable. Yea, thou hast played the harlot with them. You know, like a prostitute. And yet couldst not be satisfied. Ezekiel 16, 15. But thou didst trust in thine own beauty and playest the harlot because of thy renown and pourest out thy fornications on everyone who passed by. It was his. So I don't know if Justin Peters is just not familiar with the concept. Is that it? Or is it just because you're an idolater of John MacArthur? I just can't believe it. Yeah. Anyone who tells me that I can take the mark of the beast and worship the Antichrist in his image, and they say it with a straight face as a presumed teacher of God's word, that person is a spiritual whore, Justin. It's really simple. Anyone who puts their stamp of approval on John Piper, who's practicing Lectio Divina with Beth Moore, that person's a spiritual whore, Justin. And guess what? You are too. You are too. Yeah. Should we take our discernment cues from a guy like you who for five months knew about a false vision of Jesus' testimony and said nothing? Wow, Justin. Justin, the false witness. The man who has not only uh, no discernment, he has no integrity. He praises the dripping lips of the flatterer, Doreen Virtue. And when people told him she had a questionable testimony, uh, very questionable, uh, he just ignored it. Ignored it until he was forced to deal with it and do damage control. And he calls me the bad guy for doing it. Wow, Justin. Now I'm just wondering if Justin's going to apologize to Benny Hinn. Because uh, Justin, again, has double weights uh, and measures. Differing weights and measures. Double standards. What he applies to Benny Hinn, he won't apply to Doreen Virtue or himself. Justin, I hope you're going to issue an apology to uh, Benny Hinn. You see, Justin made a video about Benny Hinn uh, a little while back called uh, Has Benny Hinn Really Repented? When Benny Hinn claimed to have repented, Justin made a whole video analyzing it, critiquing it, and saying, no, this is false repentance, and here's why. Let's take a look at some of this, shall we? It was a, yeah, there you go, an an, an, answer, a plea to Benny Hinn. Right after the first major expose was done on his ministry by Inside Edition, Benny Hinn's ministry immediately went into damage control mode, and uh, Benny Hinn had to address it. Oh, you mean like Doreen Virtue, right? When the first real expose was done on her and you by me? She went and scrubbed the internet of her testimony, then started filing false copyright strikes against me to have the videos removed? You mean like that, Justin? That kind of damage control? 
telling people that a, uh, uh, April 29th, it wasn't demons defending her vision of Jesus. And then a few short days later, a, a week or two later, saying uh, demons led me to Jesus. And then eight days after that, saying she's neutral. You mean like that kind of damage control? Brilliant. Doreen Virtue has a lot in common with Benny Hinn. And you, you have the audacity? Now he's talking to Benny Hinn now, right? This whole video you're seeing him talking, he's talking to Benny Hinn. And you, you have the audacity to talk about how you were used? Benny, your lack of, of self-awareness is just gobsmacking. And this is a, this is a very telling statement. And this is this is one of the reasons that I can definitively say you have not repented. Oh, interesting. You mean like how Doreen Virtue, a virtue, again fake name, and and ridiculously ironic as well. You mean like how she claims she was slandered? People are using my old videos, plural, when she knew full well exactly one video from 2017 was used and I explained the reason I used it was because the exact same testimony was in it as was in every iteration of it from there? You mean like how she claimed, I can't believe people are doing this, I'm a victim, knowing full well that she had been defending this as, as little as a, f a week or two before the video that I did came out? You mean like that, Justin? Are you going to apologize to Benny Hinn, or are you going to hold Doreen Virtue accountable? I, I suspect neither. Pontius Peters doesn't want anything to do with either one of those things, because he's a proud man. She says, I'm a relatively new... Now, this is back to Doreen Virtue. Listen. She says, I'm a relatively new Christian, but I'm aware that it's a sin to make up stories and lie about people, as he's done in this video from what people are saying about it, such as claiming I currently use tarot cards. Uh, yeah, never said that. So that's a lie. And she tries to provide the out. Well, from what people are saying about it, I'm a relatively new Christian, but I even I know that it's wrong to make up stories about people, you know, like saying I still use tarot cards. I never said that. I specifically supposed that you don't still hold to that aspect of the testimony. And I addressed it in the video and said... What is intact here and consistent is the vision itself. I am supposing the other things she doesn't still affirm. Never once did I say she still uses tarot cards. Never once. So that's a lie. But she says, I'm aware that it's uh, a sin to make up stories against people. I got a question, Doreen. Did you make up a story to YouTube? When you signed a document saying, in good faith, I believe that he has infringed copyright did, did you make up a story to YouTube when you signed under penalty of perjury that you really believed I uh, uh, stole effectively your copyrighted material? I think you did. I think you know you did, Doreen. You devious, lying woman. Benny Hinn. As you well know, you are a false prophet. And according to Deuteronomy chapter, chapter uh, 13, Deuteronomy 13, a false prophet, there's a penalty for that, and that is to be put to death. Now, I'm not advocating that, obviously. Not at all. Not at all. We are in the New Covenant. But if we were still living in the Old Testament days, before the cross, you would have been stoned to death a long time ago, Benny. Well, um, let's let's just evaluate one thing yeah that's true justin's invoking old testament law for some reason just to let benny hinn know if this was the old testament you would have been stoned a long time ago you know because there were you know laws against being a false prophet well let's look at another law in deuteronomy 19 how about that how about this justin uh deuteronomy 19 15 one witness shall not rise against a man concerning any iniquity or sin that he uh commits by the mouth of two or three witnesses, the matter shall be established. If false witness rises against any man to testify against him of wrongdoing, then both men in the controversy shall stand before the Lord, before the priests and the judges to make a careful inquiry. And indeed, if the witness is a false witness and has testified falsely against his brother, then you shall do to him as he thought to have done to his brother, so you shall put away the evil thing from among you. 
Justin, since you're the one invoking Old Testament law, I hope you're aware and prepared that the false witness you have clearly borne against me and the false witness that Doreen Virtue has borne against me, since you want to talk about Old Covenant laws, be prepared for the gavel of justice to fall swiftly on both of you from the Lord, not from me, at the end of the day. Whatever you guys desired to do to me, don't be surprised if the Lord does it to you, Justin. But he says, Benny Hinn is a false teacher, false prophet. Well, of course he is. But even Doreen Virtue admits that she was as well to Justin. Listen. In January 2015, which convicted me of being a false teacher. Because after all, I was headed to becoming an NAR, New Apostolic Reformation Prophetess. Okay, so she admits she was a false teacher and on her way to becoming an NAR prophetess. She was a false teacher. Um, and so I guess she would have been stoned a long time ago too, right? Keep in mind, she admits she wasn't just a lost person. She was a false teacher. She taught things about Jesus for, I don't know, more than 20 years that were false. She wasn't just an atheist that came to the Lord. She was a false prophetess giving false vis uh, false um, readings and telling people false things about Jesus uh, for years. One version of her testimony claims she mostly surrendered her life in 1995 to Jesus. So she was giving false information about Jesus for years and years. The very thing for which you are most well known, the thing that your ministry has been marked by, the thing that you have been called out Benny Hinn. As being in serious, egregious error by hundreds of people. Mm -hmm. And you have this close relationship with the Holy Spirit, and somehow he did not bother to give you a heads up that one of the staples of your teaching has been wrong. And Benny, something's got to give here. Something has to give. You have either been lying about all these times that God has spoken to you? You've been lying about how intimate your relationship with God has been? If you, if you have had this close relationship with God, this, was not, this would not have been a, a new revelation for you. You've either been lying about it or you are up to your eyeballs in deep, deep deception. Mm -hmm. Deep deception. God did not tell you to teach something that is wrong, obviously. Obviously. So again, you have either been lying, flat yep. out lying, making this up, right. claiming that God told you to teach these things, knowing full well that he did not tell you to teach them, or you are up to your eyeballs in demonic deception. Does that go for Doreen Virtue as well, Justin? Or do you have a different standard for her than Benny Hinn? Because the thing she is most known for, the very foundation of her ministry, is this vision of Jesus testimony. So she's either lying about it, or she's up to her eyeballs in demonic deception, which her most recent statement on it is that she's unsure. She doesn't want to make a statement. Well, I wonder where she learned that from, Pontius Peters. I, you know, I don't want to make a statement. You already made statements on both sides of the aisle. You don't know what to believe, so you just claim, I don't know. I don't know anything. Maybe you should stop trying to teach people since you know so little. Maybe that's, maybe that's a good starting point. Maybe you should have started there a long time ago. What about Benny Hinn? He's either lying about things that he claims are from God, or he's up to his eyeballs in deception. Well, the same holds true for Justin Peters' new friend, Doreen Virtue. She's either lying about this vision, which she says, no, it happened. I can't explain it biblically, but it happened. And now she's neutral on what Justin Peters calls demonic. She's neutral on demonic things. This is according to Justin Peters. Wow, good luck. Now he tells Benny Hinn he needs to give back the money. Uh-oh. Get ready. Benny, you have defrauded millions of people for 40 years. A lot of people. And I understand there's no possible way that you could repay each and every one of those millions of people. Right. Four times what you've defrauded them. You couldn't do that if you wanted to, if your life depended on it. I, I get that. Right. But there are things that you can do 
And if you are truly sorry over your sin, if you're truly repentant, then that should bear some fruit in your life. And there will, there will be tangible fruit of that. And so even though you can't possibly repay everything that you've defrauded from all of those millions of people, uh, here's what you can do. Listen. What you can do and what you should do you should right do. now. Right now. Is you should empty your ministry coffers. Give it up. And give every cent that the ministry has. Everyone. To doctrinally sound ministries. All your cash, all your everything, all your your the ministry properties, uh, equipment, everything, liquidate it. Sell it. I know you can't do this overnight, but but you should you should do that because your ministry has been a fraud Ooh. for 40 years. You should, you should empty your coffers and give that money to some good, doctrinally sound ministries that do rightly divide the word of truth. Eww. Liquidate your assets and give the money to somebody else. Did Justin ever ask Doreen Virtue if she did the same thing? Did he urge her to do the same thing? If you type in how many books has Doreen Virtue authored, You'll get this little thing that says at least 15. At least 15. As you can see, dating back to the 90s, well over 20 years at this point. Right? Over uh, From 97, this is the earliest one here. I, I think she has some titles a little bit earlier than this. But from 97 to 2017, she was profiting off of this. False teachings of Jesus and angels, etc., etc. Justin, did you ever ask her how much money she made as a New Age author, one of the best-selling in the world? Did you ever ask her how much she made in this false, fraudulent ministry? Did you tell her she was supposed to give back that money? Did she give back that money? Did she give it? Did she liquidate all those assets and give it to somebody else? Or is she the only one that's permitted to keep her uh, ill-gotten gain? Did you even bother to ask her? I bet you didn't, Justin, because you're a raging hypocrite. You don't care that she was involved in New Age for 25 years and kept and kept the money, did she? I don't know. Good question. Here's a better question. He says Benny Hinn, if he really repented, he would have stopped teaching. Then you should join a good doctrinally sound church and you should sit in the pew and you should submit yourself to sound biblical teaching done by biblically qualified elders, men. Submit to that and sit in the pew and learn. Uh, this, is, this would be evidence that real repentance has been wrought in your heart. And Benny, it's not just that you should change your preaching. And uh, people have asked me, well, won't we know if this repentance from Benny Hinn is real, if his teaching changes, if, if he changes his preaching? And my response to that, no, actually, actually, if he changes his preaching, that will be evidence that, in fact, genuine repentance has not yet happened. Why do I say that? Benny, because you're not qualified to preach. Hmm. And so real repentance will be evidence not if your preaching changes, but if your preaching stops. It stops. If you continue to preach, that will be evidence that you're not repentant. Well, I guess we now have evidence that Doreen Virtue never repented because she never stopped, Justin. For 25 years, she had a fraud ministry teaching false things about Jesus, false things about angels, etc., making money, authoring multiple titles. You know what she did? She made a lateral move from the New Age to Christianity. She claims, now she doesn't even know when she was saved. She had the vision in January uh, of 2017, but she says it wasn't until later, um, reading Deuteronomy 18, that she thinks she was actually saved, maybe later in 2017. Right, So late 2017, she has only possibly been saved for two and a half years. And guess what? 2018, right after she got saved, she just started putting up all kinds of teachings on Vimeo. She never stopped. 
she just changed. According to Justin, evidence of real repentance is not the change in preaching, it's stopping altogether. So Justin Peters has just admitted and proven, according to him, Doreen Virtue never repented. She never stopped and sat down to learn. She just changed her message and kept on trucking. Did she give back all the money she, she fraudulently got from people by lying to them? I'm willing to bet she didn't. Did Justin Peters care to ask? Nope. Is he going to apologize to Benny Hinn? I doubt it. But Doreen Virtue never stopped. She changed her message and kept on trucking and has to delete videos every so often because she doesn't know what she's talking about. And then when somebody points it out, she tries to silence them. All of it is evidence that she's a false convert. Well done, Justin. Well done. And don't you imagine that fresh out of being in a cult for a quarter of a century, you're probably, you know, you're probably going to have some, some new age cobwebs that you've got to shake out and clear out. Of, of, uh, yeah. Care, care to address the elephant in the room? The, Justin, this woman is authoring books with new age cobwebs in them and you don't care? She, she's got a, a teaching ministry all over the internet, reaching hundreds of thousands of people with new age cobwebs. Not one person with sound judgment ever thought to tell her, hey, maybe you shouldn't be doing this since you've got all these new age cobwebs and, not, and whatnot. That's fine. Why don't you sit down and learn? No, nobody thought to tell her this. Their excuse is, well, she's just a baby Christian. Leave her alone. If she's such a novice, why is she talking to people like she knows what she's talking about? Well, she's just interviewing, getting information. No, she's making statements like, demons led me to Jesus and they should lose their demon job. That's a theological statement, Justin, that she pulled down and then replaced with, I'm neutral now. Now she's neutral about visions. I don't want to make a definitive statement. No, you want to have your cake and eat it too. New age cobwebs? And you, not once did you think to tell her, hey, maybe it's not wise for you to be teaching anybody. You know, since you were a false teacher, admittedly a false teacher and a false prophetess for 25 years, the evidence of repentance means that you stop trying to teach people, not that you just change and continue. Double standards, double standards, disgusting double standards. But maybe she learned to do this from Justin. Listen. And I say this as, as someone who has deceived myself for years. Uh, in fact, um, your nephew and I were both in ministry before we were truly converted. Oh, that's comforting. Justin Peters was in ministry before he was ever converted. Justin Peters wasn't called to ministry. Justin Peters was driven by himself to ministry. He admits it. If you go back and watch a 2010 interview with him and Todd Friel and Wretched Radio, according to Justin Peters, he was never even converted. And yet he's traveling the world doing ministry. God didn't call him to do that. He called himself to do that. And what happened when Justin Peters supposedly, there's a lot of doubt about this now, supposedly he said he was converted in, in 2011. You know what he did? He just kept going. He didn't think to stop. He didn't think to say, you know, boy, I haven't been saved my whole life. Maybe I should sit down and learn something because clearly I didn't, I didn't know what I thought I knew. Nope. He just continued trucking like nothing ever happened. Just kept on moving. Wow. Brilliant. Where is your love, sir? Anywhere. Where? where? I have not seen a scintilla not a hint of any love that you would have for any of these people. Mm. And you may say, oh, well, speaking the truth is love. Yeah, speaking the truth is love, but there is a way to speak the truth. You haven't even spoken the truth. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're a long way from the in truth part. You haven't, you, or the in love part. You haven't gotten to the truth part yet. Where's your love for Dorian Virtue? Ooh, good question. Where, where's your love? Where's your love? Not to toot my own horn here, but Joshua, I have shown more compassion to Kenneth Copeland than you have to Doreen Virtue. How does that work? Hmm. Well, 
That's a good question, Justin. You've shown more love to Kenneth Copeland than I have to Doreen Virtue. That's funny. Would you call it loving to know about a false vision of Jesus' testimony for five months and say nothing? You hate Doreen so much that you didn't bother to reach out to her and warn her about her false vision. Don't pretend like you love her. Spare us the crocodile tears, Justin. Even heathens and tax collectors can get teary-eyed when they're frustrated. Where is your love? Where's your love for me, Justin? That's a good question. There's a way to say it. Tell me what I said or how I said it that's different from what you said and how you said it to me. Oh, it's only righteous indignation when you say it and to whom you say it to, right? Because you've cornered the market on truth, teaching, and discernment, haven't you, Justin? Where is your love, Justin? Where's your love for Doreen Virtue when you found out about her testimony on November 30th, when somebody warned you that she was promoting occult stuff? Did you have no love for Doreen enough to even look into it? Or did you look into it and not say a word about it? Which one was it, Justin? Where is your love? But you want to talk about the love that you have for Kenneth Copeland versus my love for her? If it wasn't for my video, she would have never removed that testimony. Now, it's damage control. I can see that clearly. It's worldly sorrow. I don't think it's real repentance for a second. But at least on the surface of it, Justin, I had more of an impact on her overnight than you did in five months. Don't talk to me about love when you don't love Where's your love for God? How can you even hope to love other people when you don't love truth? You knew about this for five months and said nothing, and you want to sit here and pretend like you love God, like you're serving God, like you're helping shepherd his people, and you're bending over backwards to defend a woman who's waffled left and right on this, and you knew about it for five months and said nothing? You liar. You fraudulent liar, you. Where's my love? Where's your love for God, Justin? You might claim to love the Word of God, but you know nothing of the God of the Word. Four people that I know of tried to warn you, and you ignored all of them. Where's your love for them to even, to even heed their warning? You didn't love them. You didn't love Doreen. And worst of all, you didn't love God. I know who you love. You love yourself. Self-love, Mr. Pontius Peters. How about some closing thoughts? Final thoughts here. Benny, you say that you have made this change not because of your critics, not even because of your nephew or the interviews that he's done or the two books that he's written. You say it's been none of that. Uh, you say it's because of your own relationship with the Lord. Benny, at this point, you do not have a relationship with the Lord. You are a false convert. You are deceiving and being deceived. Uh, that there is a part of you that at some level thinks you're doing the right thing. That thinks you're doing the Lord's work. Uh, you are deceiving and you are being deceived. But Benny, you are not a Christian. You are not a Christian. You have not come to genuine repentance. You have not come to true faith in Christ. Well, I hope Justin Peters and Doreen Virtue both take a second listen to those words. Because I think that deep down within both of them, there's an element that thinks what they're doing is right. Uh, Jesus even said to his disciples in John 16, there will come a day when those who kill you think that they uh, do God's service. I think Justin believes what he's doing is right. I really do think he's mad at me. But he and I both know he's mad that he's getting found out. When he made that righteously indignant response to me, so angered, the whole time he made that video, he had known about her uh, uh, occult dealings and potential uh, insane testimony for five months and didn't bother to look into it or he did and he said nothing because he doesn't love her he doesn't love you and worst of all he couldn't possibly love God to know that information and sit on it you liar Justin 
but you want us to believe that you've come to genuine faith in Christ? Doring virtue? Engaged in damage control? Signing documents under penalty of perjury to try to silence me? But you want to talk to me about your love for God and your love for truth? Where's your love, Justin? Oh, boy. The flatterer and the flattered. Somebody commented to me that watched this, and they said it was disgusting how smitten Justin looked. In fact, a gentleman said his wife told him that. Justin starts blushing as the honey drips from Doreen's lips. They're both deceiving and being deceived. Both of them. Thank you so much. It's been such an honor to be with you. I can't tell you how much this means to me personally and to everyone who's going to watch this. Your work is golden. Oh, thank and you, we're, Doreen. We're praying for you. Good work, too. Thank you. All right. Appreciate your time. God bless You're you. You're very welcome. Okay. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye. Oh, he can't get enough of it. Oh, thank you. You keep up your good work, too. Remember earlier when he told us? I knew nothing about her. All I knew was she came out of the new age. That's it. I didn't know anything. But he tells her to keep up the good work. He didn't know if she was doing Joyce Meyer Bible studies. He didn't know that she was promoting vision. I said if she was doing Joyce Meyer Bible studies. He didn't know if she was doing that or what she was doing. He knew nothing. Went on there praising her and telling her to keep up the good work. Talk about gross negligence. All she had to do was say, oh, your work is golden, beautiful. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Weak men like Justin Peters and Chris Rosebro love that. They love that attention. Oh, tell me more about how amazing I am. Read Proverbs 7, the end of Proverbs 7. That's talking about an adulterous woman, but there's a clear spiritual application. Did a whole teaching on that, spiritual seduction. Look it up. It says, all who were taken in by her were strong men. That's how it describes a, a seductive woman or uh, enticing uh, spiritual ideas. Supposedly strong men get taken in with this stuff. Now, now listen to this. If anyone can see anything I'm doing currently that's unbiblical, I welcome loving correction from brothers and sisters in Christ. All glory to God, Doreen D. Virtue. That's humility. Uh, no, that's called false humility, Justin, and you should know better. If anybody can see anything unbiblical that I'm doing, I welcome loving correction. But would that include potential perjury? Because, Justin, if she indeed made these copyright strikes against me, in bad faith, that's considered perjury. Is she willing to say that she doesn't know of the concept of fair use? Justin, you wouldn't even have a ministry if it wasn't for fair use laws. Benny Hinn, Jesse Duplantis, Joyce Meyer, Kenneth Copeland, none of them are doing to you what Doreen Virtue has done to me. Of all those horrible false teachers, leave it to devious Doreen Virtue to stoop so low to try to have me silenced. Chris Rosebro wouldn't be allowed to speak if people did to him what Doreen Virtue has done to me. Would you care to address that, Justin? Would you care to address how it's absurd that she did this to me? Or are you going to remain the consummate hypocrite? When are you going to address to everybody why you sat for five months idly knowing about Doreen Virtue's false testimony? Or would you like to tell everybody how you magically didn't receive three emails on December, I think it was December 6th, December 22nd, and again, April 16th? Are you, would you, are you really going to say you never got those emails? Liar. You're a proven liar, Justin. And we know for a fact that two days later, you responded to one. Now what? You didn't look into it, or you did, and you didn't say anything. Justin Peters is disqualified from ministry. And anybody who sanctions what he's doing now 
is proving themselves to be disqualified and not concerned with truth. Justin, this is my... I think Justin thinks I have a personal problem with him. This is not personal, Justin. I would rather be your friend. I would rather like you. When I first reached out to you, I did so because I thought you would listen. In 2016, I really sincerely gave you the benefit of the doubt. And I said, Justin, I think you, of all the people that I might be able to reach, I thought you might be the one to listen. I tried to do this with Paul Washer, too. I spoke with Kevin Height at Heart Cry Missionary Society for a long time, on two occasions, pleading with him about some problems. Nothing happened. But not because I didn't try. Not because I really genuinely didn't have a heart to to reach you. I did. This is unfortunate. This is not personal. I would much rather be your friend. I would much rather support you. In fact, I did for a long time. This is inexcusable, Justin. I am urging you to step down because you have proven yourself to be disqualified. You lied to everybody. You bore false witness against me in the process. You filed copyright strikes against other people while Doreen was doing it to me. You want to claim you didn't know about it, Justin? Did you put her up to it? Whose idea was it, Justin? The truth comes out. You knew about this testimony for at least five months. When even you said, I've since heard something along those lines, but I don't know the details. When did you hear something along those lines, and why didn't you look into it, Justin? Tell us when. Because you've been found out. You didn't think it was going to come out, or you didn't want to address it, and when you did, instead of owning your sin, like you urged Benny Hinn to do, you call me a false witness. Because if he had shown the rest of the clip, I told Doreen I don't believe in dreams and visions. We know, Justin. I know you don't believe in dreams and visions. The question was, how do you not believe in dreams and visions, but you support her, given her testimony? So I asked, did you not know or did you not care? And you said, well, I didn't know. But two days later, when you found out, you didn't say anything. So it was both, unfortunately. You didn't know, and two days later, you didn't care. Justin Peters is disqualified from ministry Doreen Virtue was never qualified in the first place, and according to Justin Standard for Benny Hinn, Doreen proves that she's never really repented. She never stopped trying to teach people. She just changed her message. Let's wait to see what her Deceive No More July 28th book has in it. I wonder if this false vision of Jesus testimony is in it. I'm willing to bet it is, but Justin... That concludes our lesson in Galatians chapter 2. Other people got bewitched by you after I had already proven something to them. And they got bewitched by you because you got bewitched by her. There's a whole lot of bewitching and people deceiving and being deceived. Until next time, God bless and Godspeed.